know it and they know to make that happen, they've got to take care of Jackson State today. And that is a tough challenge because really they want to get back and play Jackson State. <laughs> they would love to do that. And to do that, they may have to run the football on the ground. Look for a lot of ground and pound today from this young man, the leading rusher in the swag, Jarvion Powers. But I mean, when you watch this guy run, he runs on a mission, he runs bad, he's fast, he's got great dexterity, and watch the power right here. Ah, I'm not going down. That's how he runs. And they'll need that every inch of him today. And you talk about punishment, because on the other side, Jackson State has a young man who can dish out some punishment. His name is Savion Wilkerson, and he's the number two rusher in the swag. Yeah, and he'll be rushing and pounding his way to 1,000 yards. He wants a 1,000-yard season, and that's what he'll have today. He doesn't have far to get there, but he will certainly. And on the other side, Fred McNair in his sixth season as Alcorn State, 29 and 11 record versus SWAC opponents. That is very impressive. And of course, everybody knows his brother, Steve McNair. Yeah, no, no question. That family has done so much for HBCU. And, 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 and Coach Sanders actually is one that would talk about how much of uh, a pillar he was in the community, what he meant to HBCU football, what is him and his family meant. So he has nothing but respect uh, for the McNairs and for Frank. Uh, you know, Fred, Fred you, me. you mentioned that Fred and, and then Coach uh, Prime, nothing but love for yeah. Coach McNair. You know, he talked a lot about how much he respects him and the job that he's doing at Alcorn State. So we're getting ready for the opening kickoff here in Lorman, Mississippi. And Alcorn will give the football to Jackson State first. They will get the first bite at this apple. And swag football is underway in Lorman, Mississippi. And here come the Tigers on the return. It's Cochran trying to get around the outside, but he's banged out of bounds. Nice return there by Jackson State on the opening kickoff of the game. Yeah, they're coming right at him. And again, uh, you know, Coach Bryan, they're going to test and see exactly what the Braves are going to come at him with. And whatever they come at him with, they're going to go the opposite direction. They want to stack the box. They're going to go up top. If they back up a little bit, then you're going to see him run and pound. We will get our first look at Shadur Sanders. He's number two. He's the leading passer in the swag. Maybe the most impressive things, the 31 touchdowns, but how about that completion percentage at 70.7? .7? And that just means he knows where he's going to go with the ball, and he's very accurate when he gets it there, right? That's important for your receivers and your team. This guy's been breaking down tapes since he was seven. Starts it with the pass, completed pass to Dallas Daniels, and he does a great job getting up field for a nice game. Yeah, and again, very deliberate. Right? They're, 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 they're back there. They're, they're going to see exactly where they line up at, and if they're going to be back off the rod receiver, they're just going to pitch it out to them, let them get four or five yards. Sanders and the Tigers go to an up-tempo as they get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Second and three now turns he hands inside that is Savion Wilkerson with his first carry of the day and it's a first down for the Tigers I, I loved it when coach prime told us this week we got to see this guy get his brand he's close to a thousand yards we want to see him get his brand in this ball game today so first and ten he goes with another pass underneath to Shane Hooks this time Hooks is going to pick up about six yards on the play as the Braves have to pull in a gang tackle here to get him down and he's still not down that's an absolute scrum right they get a, I like it it's a, it's not even just a weight pass it's a little bit of a short slant so your receiver is able to open up to you uh, to catch the ball quick, quickly and our cricket impact players of the game on Jackson State, Shador Sanders and Aubrey Miller Jr. Aubrey Miller, one heck of a linebacker. They'll count on him. We'll get to the other side in a minute. As Shador goes up top, has a man open. It's a completed pass. He has Coleman again, and he's hit out of bounds hard. But a nice catch, and that should be a first down again for Jackson State. And again, Jackson State really dictating the, 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 the flow of the game. And they are dictating the plays right there. Again, you leave somebody open, he's going to hit it. Because, again, just like you said, when you're 70% effective, that's fantastic. You're going to make sure you make the connection. Go to the running game this time. And it's Wilkerson who carries straight ahead. He's going to pick up a few inside. That's going to be one of the keys to the ball game. Uh, Coach Prime said, we will go tempo because Alcorn State is out to shorten the game as much as they can on offense. So we now have a second and seven. For the Tigers. 
as they slow down a little bit as Shadur Sanders looks over to the sideline. As I mentioned, he's the number one passer in the sweat. Threw for four TDs just last week. And he turns and he hands to Wilkerson again. And Wilkerson goes forward for a good defensive stop right there by the Braves. Uh, the game presented by Chevy for Jackson State. And it's keep your balance. In other words, pass run, and they're already doing it right there. They make sure they're balanced. You don't know where they're coming from. And then force, force Alpo to throw the ball. Make sure they have to get it in the air and dominate. Dominate, dominate, dominate. That's all you ever hear Coach Prime say. And that's what they intend to do. That's always seems to be the goal. But this is a big third and six as he puts Coleman in motion to the left. Coleman might have been in motion a little too early as he turned up early, but the pass is caught by Shane Hooks, and apparently the Braves have stopped him a little short. Looks like, looks like he may be a yard shy after that reception, but you, you saw there was much, much Coleman again turns up, and I thought he may have turned up just a tad early, but the officials did not see it. Completed pass, and he's a yard shy. Yeah, I agree with you. He did turn up, but they're going to go for it, fourth and one. Yeah. Fourth down and a yard to go. So the first fourth down opportunity of the ball game. Sanders will throw it. Dumps it off underneath. Has his big tight end. And that is a first down to DJ Stevens. A big hit on the play. And let's see where the officials are putting it down. Well, that was close, but it looks like they gave the Tigers the first down. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he could. It is a first down, and the JSU drive will continue. And I'll tell you, if he got it, he got it by an inch. He barely turned up and was able to. He, they dropped him quick. Excellent tackle there. Kelvante Key making a big stop, and then here comes Wilkerson again with that ground and pound. We said this guy can run the football. 5'9", about 205, but he really packs a punch. He does. I mean, you can see it when you watch a running back lower the boom, and you see that defender back you know, kind of hit back a little bit and always fall forward for the running back. That tells you what kind of power they have. Yeah, he picked up five yards on first down and Sanders throws to his big tight end underneath and he's going to be knocked down hard, tackled about three yards shy of the first down. So good reaction from the Braves secondary on that one. Yeah, the Tigers pass game is really almost like a quick run, right? These are these are just short little designs to get five, six yards and they're doing it every time. They're going quickly again. They go to Wilkerson. He's going to be stopped short. So again, Wilkerson will be a yard shy of the first down. The first time Coach Prime was in this situation, the Tigers went for it, and they don't blink this time. Shadur Sanders goes right back to the line of scrimmage as Jackson State lines up to go for it. Fourth and about two for the first down to convert and keep the drive going with the football resting right at the 20-yard line. Big conversion coming up here. And the Braves are stacking the box. They're coming inside. Look for Jackson State to go up top. Wilkerson walks to Sanders left. Sanders will throw again. Going up top. Looking in the end zone. And it's an incomplete pass. He was trying to get it to number four. Dallas Daniels. The ball goes right off of his hands. But there is a flag down on the field. And that flag is for not keeping your mouth shut when you play great defense. That's exactly what that is. I mean, you cannot go and yell and scream and stomp in front of the receiver that just dropped the football and right at him screaming and yelling after you make a great defensive play. Our referee for the game, Preston Clipper, as you see, he discusses the call with some of his best friends and buddies on the field. So first down all corn because the penalty occurred after the pass was incomplete. Correct. And watch this ball drop in there. He just can't hold on to it. All right. It's a little bit to the wide side. You need to give him some room. And then watch this. He will jump up and he's just stomping. And he's right at him screaming and yelling, screaming and yelling as he gets up. And again, I give uh, uh, Jackson State a lot of credit. You just handle your business. You get up. You go right back to the huddle. And that's Dallas Daniels. Just kept his cool and went back. But uh, you can't taunt like that. So the first big stop of the ball game goes to the Braves. The Alcorn State Braves. They come up with a big stop. It was the second attempt on fourth down on the opening drive of the game. So now our first look at Trey Lawrence. 
who's making his fourth start of the year at quarterback, and he turns and he gives to the conference's leading rusher, Jarvion Howard. Not much going on in the middle for Howard. And the Tigers are stacking inside, daring, said, please throw the ball, right? They are, they are one safety deep. Everybody else is up forward. Quarterbacks are even playing tight, and they're saying, Mr. Trey, come on up top. We're, we're giving you an opportunity. Only 199 passing yards for Trey Lawrence. One TD pass. Uh, we actually saw when he came in, he made his debut versus Grambling earlier this year. He passes, has a man open, and a good pass, and a completed pass to C.J. Bowler for a first down for the Braves. And that's key for the Braves, right? If they can get enough pass going to back up the Tigers and have some balanced offense, they're going to be huge. And that's a great catch, and it's a huge play. They have to show them they're willing to pass. On first down, Jarvion Howard tries to work his way, but that Jackson State defense is right there. You know, they've had a tremendous season on defense led by coordinator Dennis Thurman. He's done a whale of a job, and they've been number one for most of the year. Yeah, there's those other impact players. Uh, there's not by cricket. Uh, Trey Lawrence, the quarterback for Alcorn, and then Terrence Ellis, the line uh, inside. He is, he is huge, played huge on that drive. Uh, they have to have big, big games out of that. Trey especially, because he's got to make sure that the pass is is at least stable enough for the Tigers to respect it. If it's not, they're going to see eight, nine people in the box the entire time. Stop and the run. Terrence Ellis is their leading tackler with 72 on the season, but Alcorn with the football now, second and 10. Lawrence sprints out to the left. He's going to keep it, and he's pushed out of bounds right about the 33, 32-yard line as we come closing in on the eight-minute mark here in the first quarter. As we take a look now, our keys to the game for Alcorn brought to you by Chevy. Run, Howard, run. <laughs> I think that's self-sufficient. Uh, Jerry and Howard is going to have to have a big-time day, be real successful. Uh, interior D's got to be strong and tough, and then no takeaways. Can turn the ball over. Ball is loose in the backfield, but there was movement up front in the offensive line. Every time you have one of these situations, the defense is pointing at the offense and vice versa. But we will see what Mr. Clipper has to say and that will back up the Braves five yards yeah the only pointing that matters is the referee <laughs> which way he points the ball right but again I, I think uh, players tend to look at that as influence right they want to influence uh, the call just in case they think they may have missed it <laughs> to give them an idea of where they need to go with the ball the Braves are averaging 21.5 points a game so they've done a really good job of ball control and winning with their defense and now they have a crucial third and five coming up for Alcorn after the penalty. Excuse me, make that third and ten after the penalty. So Lawrence looking to his right, shoots it downfield, has a man over there, and it's incompleted pass broken up right there by Shiloh Sanders, who came over from his safety position to knock that ball away. <laughs> He's playing boy, no doubt about it. But watch the break on the ball. And then he gets there right at the end. As soon as it touches the receiver hand, he's got his hand on it, smacking that ball away. Good job, great time. Yeah, that, that was that closing speed, something mm -hmm. his pops was pretty famous for. You know what's funny is everyone uh, talks about football speed versus times on a track, you know, when guys go to the combine and all that type of stuff. There's just players that play fast, and I know you, you, you notice that too. He's one of those guys that plays fast. He gets there. I don't know what the time is, but he gets there when he needs to. Noah Keone on the punt, gets it away, line drive kick. Gaines looks at it, thinks about it, but he decides not to pick it up. So Jackson State will get their second possession of the ball game. That's coming up when we return. No score with 7:19 to go in the first quarter. Yeah. We make a lot of money. 
I make a bitch go and get some money from me. Stack a whole lot on this. I gotta get the reason why I'm smoking on this. I remember I was down bad. It was days used to pray to get a hundred. Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road. Yeah, I'm on the overload. I, I, I was your pity pimping. Till I got a white bitch with a lot of things. My niggas say I'm eating mama in my business. Think a nigga ripping, but I'm in the kitchen with the money count. And a whole lot of case snow bunnies. Nigga thought I was playing. I had to go and get me some more money. I had to go and flip me some packs. I had to go and get me a couple bitches with a quarter. That's at least a rack. <laughs> rack song. Match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. Swag Football on ESPN is presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, by Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. And by Chevrolet. Find new worlds. Still in the first quarter here in Lorman, Mississippi, the big battle between Alcorn State and Jackson State. The Tigers from JSU with the football, their second possession of the ball game as they go back on offense. Sanders will throw on first down, and it's near the sidelines, and the official says out of bounds. He was trying to hit Dallas Daniels again, but he is out of bounds, not in play. That will go down as an incomplete pass. Yeah, Daniels, their big-time target, 591 yards on the season, eight touchdowns. He's, he's definitely a guy that uh, Sanders likes to hook up with there on that. Yeah, he's been their leading receiver, and, and he's been just a transfer from Western Illinois, and Coach says he is definitely an NFL prospect. But this time, they come right back to the running game and banging inside hard is Savion Wilkerson again. The one thing you'll notice about Savion Wilkerson, when there's time to make no moves and just run straight forward and bang, he bangs. And then you'll watch him, and in opportune time, suddenly he'll do some cuts and cutbacks, and he's very nimble. So... He's a unique running back. He's not just a one kind of guy. Because when you watch part of the game, he looks like just a hammer. And then all of a sudden later, you're like, is that the same guy? <laughs> so he's got some unique, unique, unique skills. Just a sophomore, but he's been around and had a stint at West Virginia and at Delaware State. So Shadur Sanders with a pass to Wilkerson, and that is a first down. A big pass as he comes out of the backfield to make that catch. Hey, I didn't mention he was good out of the backfield <laughs> catching the ball. Did I? Got good hands. <laughs> And again, it was great because he just kind of slid out there. The defenders weren't paying much attention to him. He got open. And again, look at the accuracy of Sanders dropping that ball right in there. It is a big deal when you can put the football where someone can do something with it. First down on the play, first and 10. They go back to Wilkerson inside, and he's going to pick up about six yards almost. This guy's getting almost five yards a crack. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it's... It, <laughs> It's impressive just watching that line move. And again, from that first drive to now, that offensive line starting to get more movement because the pass is more successful and they're spreading them out. And now that interior defense for the Braves is softening just a little bit. Second and five for Shadur Sanders and the Jackson State offense. Sanders will throw it again. Looking near the sideline and he goes high intended for Daniels again. But as you can see, Shadur Sanders early in this ball game has completed seven of nine for 49 yards and now when you see that number you can understand why his completion percentage is so high yeah i mean but again watch watch his reads his pre-read before the player ever gets off he knows where he's going he's very deliberate he doesn't stare down you watch him a quick turn and deliver the ball and he puts it where his receiver can get it not towards the defender side third and five for the tigers sanders will throw has some time. Goes over the middle. Has a man wide open. That is a first down to Dallas Daniels. And the Tigers will move the sticks again. That was like his second read. He was going to go outside. Didn't see what he liked. See, so he looks outside. Then, boom, he turns it right back inside. His second or third read. 
And again, puts it in a great place. He goes forward for the, for the uh, first down. First and 10, Shadur Sanders looking deep, but this time it sails out of bounds. Once again, mm -hmm. Dallas mm -hmm. Daniels was the intended target down the sideline. Yeah, Daniels a little too far towards the sidelines. I think he needs to start that run right around the numbers, stay in the numbers to give him some room on that outside. We may ought to mention here that the Tigers have a new offensive coordinator this year. It's Brett Bartoloni, and he has done a fantastic job, has a great relationship with Shadur, and they got that fast, fast tempo offense working. So second and 10 now for JSU. Sanders again looking for the end zone, has a man over there, and he overshot Willie Gaines, who actually had a step in the end zone. You know, that's about a third pass today that we've seen. You know, if, if you, anyone goes and watches practice, there's always a part where quarterbacks, they call it drop it in a bucket. And sometimes they'll literally put a bucket out there and see if you can drop this ball high and in, into the inside of bucket. That's a third pass. He's really laid up there and let the receiver run under. He just has been a little off target. Well, we watched him two weeks ago during warm-ups. That's true. And he was just putting that right on the money. I mean, he was just dropping it in there. He was dropping dimes all over the place. Yeah. So here we go. Third and 10 now. A big down for Jackson State. We're still in the first quarter. 5-11 to go. Sanders looking to pass. Blitz coming hard. Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket. Has some room, but he's going to be pulled down from behind. A great play by Sherilis. Claudine Sherilis with a big play right there. And, of course, he's one of their outstanding defensive players. Came up with a big stop. Yeah, he's a second-leading tackle, and he showed why. And really, watch his closing speed. That's what was impressive right here. He gets off a block and just hammers down there. Sanders thought he had more room than he had to run, and he shut him down. So it's a fourth down and four this time, and now we see the field goal unit come on. It'll be a 39-yard, excuse me, 38-yard field goal attempt by Alejandro Mata, his first attempt of the day, came in 9 of 10 on this season, and his kick is up, and it is good. He is true and right on the money with that big kick, 39-yard field goal, and that will put Jackson State out in front with 419 to go here in the first quarter. So Coach Prime has to be happy about that. We'll be back with more in just a minute. There be no doubt you are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quo to rise above. ahead of us i don't get it yeah maybe this will help so now we're in the present and now Oh, I'll be back with my 
players in that tragedy this week in at UAV where three football players were killed in just tragic circumstances there and it's an opportunity to honor them and here you see the comments from the ACC commissioner just a sad sad time for everybody involved they will be honored throughout the weekend the Washington Redskins were going to have their numbers put on their uh, the de on their helmets the de decals put on their helmets for this week and uh, just a way to kind of just wish them the best and send out your thoughts and prayers to that situation there yeah and again as he said in that statement no words can can really describe that type of situation but but one thing it does show in the football community it's all one community and, and uh, i love the way football as a community comes together to support each other from conference to to teammates rivals etc so uh certainly uh prayers and wishes go with them Back here in Lorman, Mississippi, you have Jackson State out in front, 3 0 over Alcorn State, based on that Alejandro Mata 38 yard field goal to give the Tigers a 3 0 lead as they settle for three on their second possession. So now we see the Braves coming out with their second possession, and I would imagine running the football is still high on their priority list. It is, but Howard just three, three yards uh, carrying right now, just one yard uh, average. That, that's not going to get it done for him. Uh, they're going to have to come up with something explosive. And again, I think I think it, it, in the air, they've got to make separate and create some room. Jarvion Howard with a little room inside that time on that carry. So that's going to help out a lot. And as you can see, there's nothing but love between the two coaches. And this is uh, <laughs> Coach Prime talking about Coach Fred McNair. And uh, he just has so much respect for the guy. Yeah, I have the utmost respect. When I tell you the utmost, I mean, one of the pillars and leaders of HBCUs. And I mean, that's exactly how he thinks of them. And again, I think that's fantastic when you see the admiration on both sides of the football from a coaching staff. Yeah, you know, and we mentioned Steve McNair played there. Fred actually played at Alcorn also. And they come back to Howard again, and he tries to turn the corner. And he's pulled down from behind. Just could not get around that corner. Had a little daylight on the outside. Couldn't reach it, though. Yeah, that was the one that got away from him. I think that's when they'll look back later and go, man, if I had just taken a step quicker, we would have made something happen out of that. But again, great, great uh, recovery from uh, the Tigers. And again, they're daring him to throw. So it was on third and four, the pass is complete. He's trying to get the first down, and now he has the first down as he steps out of bounds. That is C.J. Bowler with the catch and the first down for the Braves. Yeah, Bowler made a really good strategic run. When I say it was just a smart run, he gets the ball, doesn't try to do too much, but he flows where there's open open hole. It sounds silly, <laughs> silly, but he flows where there's no white jerseys, right? And he got the most out of that run. He got a big block there to spring him by the other wide receiver. So first and 10 for Alcorn State and quarterback Trey Lawrence, number 13, has been leading the way. Came into this. One of the things Coach McNair said about him is he's very cool under pressure, and that's a great quality to have in a quarterback. He's going to throw it on first down. Comes inside. Bowler had his head turned, never saw it, so it goes down as an incomplete pass. Yeah, that was just uh, not on the same page right there. I mean, Bowler sure wasn't ready for that one and again they, they they look pretty fearless about throwing the ball I think they understand they're gonna have to throw the ball to have some success here to open up some room for Howard and so they are playing playing fearless and again if you're playing for a, a chance to get in the championship game I guess you better be fearless right second and ten coming up for the Braves that's the thing about it. You always want to have a chance. They do have an opportunity, but they do need a lot of help, and we'll talk about that later as Jarvion Howard is caught and dropped for a loss in the backfield. A lot of white jerseys right there for Jackson State to bring him down. Yeah, I mean, this was a jailbreak in the backfield of the Braves. I mean, it was impressive. Everyone coming off Jeremiah Brown, I think, led the charge with the confusion there, and then just a bunch of Tigers just uh, went, went and had lunch. Jeremiah Brown. First Tiger to get there. Of course, he has 4.5 sacks on the year. So he's an active guy. So now we have a big third down. And this is the situation they were trying to stay out of. Third and 13 for your young quarterback, Trey Lawrence. 6'3", 185 pounder out of Jacksonville. Big down. This time he gives to Howard. And Howard breaks a tackle. And Howard is going to actually get it a lot closer to that first down than it first appeared. Yeah, and, and but again, the Tigers will give that up. It was 13 yards. They probably gave up eight on that one, it looks like. And again, they, they came and attacked, and they got to make sure they make the tackles. 
Fourth down and four yards, so we will see the punting team come on the field for Alcorn State. And Coach Fred McNair talked so glowingly about Noah Keani. He said when the season started, they didn't have a punter. They went to Keone and said, you're our punter, man. You're just going to have to make it work. <laughs> and he said as the season has gone on and on, he's gotten better and better. And here he is with a punt attempt. He's averaging about 33 a kick now. We'll get a good bounce on that one as the ball rolls away from Gaines. And it's going to be touchdown at about the 12-yard line. So that is where Jackson State will start when we come back. 3 nothing Tigers. We'll be right back in a minute. Let's make a toast. Here's to savoring every sip and embracing every moment. Layla. Every unexpected time. everyone if you were with us at the top you heard me say that Alcorn State is still alive in the West but it's a complicated path to Jackson to win the West and as you can see there the main thing that has to happen for them to be in contention they have to win today and then they have to hope that Prairie View loses to Mississippi Valley right and Texas Southern and Southern lose yeah. so they need some help but they've got a chance Hey, you keep fighting as long as you have a chance. So first and 10 for the Tigers and Sanders again with that long pass. And it's to Daniels again. So, so far, that's been an active combination in this ball game. Yeah, and Daniels is his favorite target. makes no bones about it. And he, he's going right out to him. They've had several opportunities. And again, it, it's really like a great run. What, four or five yards a, a pop? That's not bad. Andrew Smith on the tackle for the Alcorn State Braves. So that's going to bring up second and seven after the gain of three. And they go back to the running game. And it's Wilkerson trying to get to the outside. Check that. This time that's going to be number 38 on the carry, Santee Marshall, who's done a good job filling in. Yeah, and it was supposed to go left a little bit. And, man, there was a whole house of Braves on the left side. So he had to run to the right real quick. Hey, Marshall is that explosive guy. He has a long run of 91 yards this year. So he has the speed to take it a long way when he breaks loose. Transferred from Miles College. Now we have whistles on the field. And that is the end of the first quarter of the very strong defensive first quarter yes. by both teams. Jackson State and Alcorn State, as you see Shadur Sanders going over to the sideline there. We'll be back with more in just a minute. When other carriers take your money and knock you around, Boost Mobile gives you the power to fight back with an unlimited plan for only $25 a month. Let me repeat, $25 a month for a single mile. We're talking the lowest price. Follow this new way. Tell them that 
we run the game. Yeah. Tell them that we run these yeah. niggas now. So fabricated, these niggas ain't getting paid. Pay. You niggas ain't got a job. Ooh. Get away from me, Jabron. Ooh. Remember back when I was homeless. Raymond Noodles and Malone. Now I count that bill of gates. Ooh. I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all to my safe. Them racks on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. Ooh. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way. I still left the foreign deal a lot. Test drive, had to drop the top. Ooh. I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, weeds never flop. Ooh. VIP, spark a bottle pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah, climb the ladder to the top. Yeah, flames on me, I'm high. I should hit the party with the crew. I might pop some bands, throw a fill. I might break your bitch and got the cool. I might pop some bands and throw a fill. I just blow a bag with your boo. I just did the dance and drop the crew. I just hit the party with the crew. I might pop some bands and throw a fill. Yeah, we make a lot of money. Make a bitch go and get some money from me Stack a whole lot of honors I gotta get the reason why I'm smoking on this I remember I was down bad It was days used to pray to get a honey Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road Yeah, I'm on the overload I, I, I was your pity pimping Till I got a white bitch with a lot of things My niggas say I'm eating mama in my business Think a nigga whipping, but I'm in the kitchen with the money count And a whole lot of case snow bunnies Nigga thought I was playing I had to go and get me some more money I had to go and flip me some packs I had to go and get me a couple bitches With a quarter, that's at least a rack <laughs> Racks all of my britches my young niggas jumping fish, shoot a shoot and I ain't miss. I'll, I'll, I'll be cousin in his feelings. About a bitch, you know she break me off a little penny. <laughs> I, I, I should hit the party with the crew. I might pop some bands, throw a fill. I might break your bitch and got the cool. I might pop some bands and throw a fill. I just blow a bag with some boo. I just did the dance and dropped the roof. I just hit the party with the crew. I might pop some bands. House on hand in Lorman, Mississippi for this one. Alcorn State trailing Jackson State 3-0 as we get set to start the second quarter. And you see the dance girls right there from Jackson State. The sonic boom of the South. And that's going to be a great halftime show coming up today. Can't wait to see that one. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Yeah, no, he he was very smart in the way he slid here. And again, remember la last time we saw him slide a couple weeks ago, he slid a little way too early because they, they mark the ball where you start your slide, where your intent of slide is. So he went a little further and made sure he got that first down. So the, and now a flag comes in before they could get the snap away quickly, and it's illegal procedure. 56, five-yard penalty, still first down. Thank you, Preston Clipper, for that word. It's a legal procedure against the offense, so they will back it up five. Sounds like Tyler Brown had a little twitching going on there on the line of scrimmage there, so uh, left guard. He's a transfer from Louisiana Lafayette. Big fella, 6'3", 319 pounds. He's a sophomore. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Ooh, man, he was on a mission, and you know he loved that one. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. Started on the outside of the tackle and then just kind of slid inside. <laughs> He's rubbing his belly like, mm, I'm full. <laughs> Bailey, 6'2", 260-pound junior with a big play in the first sack of the ball game. So now it's second and a long ways for Jackson State. Sanders under pressure again. 
and he's hit near his own end zone, caught and dropped at about the three yard line. So coming with the pressure is Alcorn State. Number 99 also there for the Braves with a big play. Chris Ballard, number 99. I'll tell you what, they're playing big. You wear number 99, you got to be big, and he was. Look at him from the uh, offensive defensive tackle. He just came in the outside and just kept coming. And then once he grabbed a hold of him, he wasn't going to let him go. But great pressure by several guys uh, on, on Alcorn State. Big down the gather as well. For two consecutive plays in a row. And it gets this crowd going crazy over here. I mean, that's what's good. Great crowd here, and they're giving them something to cheer about. We have a timeout on the field, so we're going to take a time off. We're going to take a timeout in the booth. The life for all corn state. Shadur Sanders in the pocket trying to go deep, but he could not get it off as Ballard is there for the stop. We'll be right back in just a minute. a place to call home is yeah. I, I, I should hit the party with the crow yeah. I might pop a band throw a fill I might break your bitch and got the cold yeah, I might pop a band throw a fill yeah, yeah. I just blow a bag with your bow mm -hmm. I just did the dance drop the crow <laughs> I just hit the party with the crow yeah, my I might pop a band throw a fill yeah. yeah we make a lot of money Make a bitch go and get some money from me. Stack a whole lot on this. I gotta get the reason why I'm smoking on this. I remember I was down bad. It was days used to pray to get a hundred. Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road. Yeah, I'm on the overload. I, I, I was your pity pimping. Till I got a white bitch with a lot of things. My niggas say I'm eating mama in my business. Think a nigga whipping, but I'm in the kitchen with the money count. And a whole lot of case snow bunnies. Nigga thought I was playing. I had to go and get me some more money. I had to go and flip me some packs. I had to go and get me a couple bitches with a quarter. That's at least a rack. <laughs> Racks all of my bitches. My young niggas jumping fish, shoot, shoot, and I ain't missing. I'll, I'll, I'll be cousin in his feelings. About a bitch, you know she break me off a little penny. <laughs> I, I, I should hit the party with the crow. I might pop some bands, throw a fill. I might break your bitch and got the cold. I might pop some bands, throw a fill. I just blow a bag with your bow. I just did the dance off the roof. I just hit the party with the crow. I might pop some bands. Big crowd on hand today with Jackson State out in front 3-0. But the Tigers have themselves in a huge hole as Shadour Sanders now operating out of his own end zone. We're looking at a third and 36 after the back-to-back -back sacks by the Alcorn State Braves. And the Tigers are just going to run the quarterback sneak. And Shadour Sanders is going to get about six yards out of the quarterback sneak. But that's a good, safe play in that mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, that, that they wanted just some room to be able to punt the ball so there's no craziness going on. And, and that was a good safe call. Didn't even bother with a handoff. We're going to scrum it as far as we can go forward, and we're going to fall and punt from there. So Sam Johnson will come on to punt the football away. It'll be his first opportunity of the afternoon. And back to return it is Manny Jones for the Alcorn State Braves. So Johnson punting out of his own end zone here. Snap is a good snap, and the pressure was on, but he gets the kick away. And Jones makes a fair catch. So Alcorn will have great field position when we come back. 12-21 to go here in the second quarter with Jackson State out in front, 3-0.
Tell them that we run the game. Tell them that we run these yeah. niggas now so fabricated. These niggas ain't getting paid. You niggas ain't got a job. Ooh. Get away from me, bro. Remember back when I was homeless. Raymond Noodles in Malone. Now I count that Billy Gates. Ooh. I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all to my safe. Them racks on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. Ooh. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way. I still left the foreign deal a lot. Test drive, had to drop the top. Ooh. I be back when my album drop. Lay out pack, weeds and never flop. Ooh. VIP, spark of bottles pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah. Climb the ladder to the top. Yeah. Flames on me, I'm hot. Yeah. yeah. Big money, every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Bad bitch, topic got discussion. Yeah. 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 Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas with you for Jackson State and Alcorn State. The Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket. Gets by Aubrey Miller. Steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. So how about Trey Lawrence making a big play on first down? They started with great field position right there. Yeah, and this is huge for them. If they're writing a script of how they want this game to go, right now it's perfectly scripted for them. They're, they're getting enough pass to spread it out. And that right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. He did a great job. I thought that one might be a little underthrown, but it was perfect for what they were trying to do. Yeah, I thought if the defender turned around, he would be able to break on it. But he did a great job of just looking outside and then busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Like I said, this the, they're on script, exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage, run the ball right at them, don't let them settle down. And before the Tigers know it, they got punched in the mouth. Jarvion Howard, their leading rusher in the SWAC, put on a nice little move in the backfield, and then when he knew he could, Dove into the end zone for the touchdown, and the Braves take the lead right at the 11:42 mark here in the second quarter. So Keone's out for the extra point attempt, and his kick is good. And how about the Alcorn State Braves? They had great field position after the turnover, and then the big pass set it up. Yeah, and again, the the, the the passing, the pass before where he wound up running it right cleared the way then you come right back with another pass throw it perfectly to receiver he reacts and then watch boom you dump it right inside to your running back who's the top in the swack and you say go get it fella and he sure does he dives in there just gets in there for the touchdown and again Howard while not blowing anything up 2.1 a carry just 17 yards on the ground but he's doing enough and they're passing enough and right there was huge they took advantage of great field position and they didn't just get three they got seven that was touchdown number 12 on the year for Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And the thing about him is his coach just raves about his physical abilities. He said they're, they're off the chart. And we saw it right there. Yeah, a little the, tap dance to avoid the, the, the contact in the backfield, and then he dives in. Yeah, he showed off his spring ability, right, being able to jump there. But Lawrence, 3 of 5. So just 3 of 5, 60%, 51 yards. But they are excellent 51 yards, exactly what they need out of him right now. They took full advantage of the great field position. And now in the ensuing kickoff, Jackson State is trying to do the same thing. But the Braves come up with a big tackle on Kevin Coleman on the return. So Coleman's going to be stopped, and this home crowd is fired up for all Corn State today. They're pulling for their Braves. Yeah, it looks like Geno Johnson, number 23 there. I mean, you talk about a tackle where you meet someone head-on, head-on, and he just, just everything stops, and he just wouldn't let go, stayed on him, 
uh, and just just stopped him cold. That's huge, an open field tackle like that. Great job, watch. He cuts, perfect form tackle, and he just stays inside. Look, he's trying to grab that ball. He will not let him go till that whistle blows. That touchdown really got this crowd engaged, and that's going to be a big advantage for Alcorn State. You know, you're playing in this stadium, and, and Coach McNair admitted it. He said, this is our grass. We're comfortable here. We have a comfort level here. So we will see if Jackson State can respond now. 11.37 to go in the half. And Sanders goes back to the running game to Wilkerson, and this time he's stacked up. Short gain on the play, maybe a yard at the most. Yeah, the Braves are really fired up, and you mentioned the fans here. I mean, this this the uh, Marino uh, Kasem Stadium holds 22,500. It's it is full <laughs> it is full today, and with a lot of excitement. You see the total yard; it's very close. Jackson State with 93, Alcorn with 84. So that's exactly what we've seen so far. It was a defensive struggle until that touchdown a few seconds ago. So now second and nine. For Shadur Sanders in the offense, he rolls to his right, looks over the middle, has a man wide open. It's Daniels, and Daniels is cracked down hard, but that's a huge gain right there for Jackson State. Huge open space in that middle, and again, a great job of just going right to the open hole. Again, good play action pass, and then Sanders getting rid of the ball. And again, he goes right in the middle of that zone. Well, he's targeted number four a lot in this ball game. The graduate student Dallas Daniels so a big first down for Jackson State Sanders looking to throw again comes down near the sidelines was trying to hit Daniels again but number 21 Andrew Smith was right there and you're going to see the official run up to him and said we not too much we don't need any more of that time <laughs> stuff going on. Came I like in. when refs do that they warn the guys and say look I, you know, I'm gonna have to throw a flag if you keep doing that but they give them a verbal warning first a lot of times people think oh well, they're throwing flags too happy usually they've warned a player good refs have warned a player once unless it's just their first flag where it's so bad they can't do a warning so the incomplete pass sets up a second and 10 for the tigers from jsu sanders will throw it again pressure has to get out of the pocket he scrambles to his right has some room over there but he can't get past ellis terrence ellis the leading tackler on that defense is over there for the open field stop and again open field tackling a lot of people don't realize how hard it is when you're talking about the athletes on offense that have so many moves to be able to stalk someone down an athlete like sanders as he's coming around that side and just watch him he catches that edge and just watch ellis break down just stays on the inside and just make sure he takes him to the sidelines yeah i think they've got devin hayes for holding on the play so jackson state will go the other way you saw it right at the end of that replay at the bottom of your screen it looked like number 79 grabbed the jersey wow. and uh, so they're going to mark that one off so the holding penalty will go against the tigers and that will wipe out a, a good defensive play but i'm sure alcorn state will take it that's because right. now it's second and 20 to go for the tigers the give is to Wilkerson, and he has a little hole, and Wilkerson will almost get the penalty yardage back there. Nice yeah. run. And I think that run right there will put him over 1,000 for the season right there. Uh, he was only four yards off uh, before that run, so I think he's got his his 1K as Coach Brown. <laughs> you know, that, that pass earlier to da Dallas Daniels, the big play went for 32 yards from, from Sanders to Dallas Daniels in the play. So now a big third down for Jackson State. Third and 13. Sanders under pressure again, and he goes down again. Number 44, that is Malachi Bailey with his second sack of the day. Yeah, Coach Frank there talked about the fact for success for them was going to have to be putting pressure on Sanders and making sure he felt them. Well, he's feeling them all right because they're breathing on him. They're grabbing him. Uh, they are getting him down. And again, it's not just it is team that they are. They're rushing their lanes, staying true and putting pressure on him. And I'll be honest with you, Sanders looks a little bit too. I don't know if lackadaisical is the word or, or he just he looks way too calm and way not too worried about that rush. That wasn't a good series for number 79, Devin Hayes. He was guilty of the holding penalty, and on that play he got beat for the sack. So it just wasn't a good series for that young man as Alcorn State will get the football back after the fair catch was made by Manny Jones. Manny Jones jogs off, so we're gonna jog off for a timeout with the Alcorn State Braves. Out in front, 7-3, we'll be right back. I just blew a bad wish, boo. I just did the dance off the roof. 
Now they're handling that part of their strip, but then they got to have Mississippi Valley State beat Prairie View A&M, Alabama A&M beat Texas Southern and Grambling State get a win over Southern. So Lawrence comes out with another pass and he completes it to Montario Hunt over near the sideline. And that's huge, the passing game for them. If they can just keep the Tigers backed off just a little bit and respect that pass, that'll help their running game, help them do exactly what they need to do. You know, for game. most of the year, this Jackson State defense has been number one in the nation. And a long pass from Lawrence down the sideline is going to go down as an incomplete pass. But when you look at it, the number one in total defense uh, giving up only like 213 yards a game. Number one in uh, rushing defense allowing only 98.2 a game. And then number one in uh, passing defense giving up 115 a game. Well, in fairness to the defense, though, they haven't really given up a ton of yards. Yardage, but it's just the plays at the right time of course that big pass play was was huge uh, for them getting that touchdown and again get seven instead of just trying to get three points uh, with that great field position right now let's see what they can do with this drive third and four for the Braves Lawrence looking to pass he's hit from behind that could be a fumble the ball is loose it's picked up and it's going to be recovered and dropped at the one yard line so a big play right there by Jackson State 42, Jeremiah Brown made the recovery. Yeah, big number 92, though, laid the absolute hammer there. Justin Ragin, uh, he's a guy who likes uh, tackles behind the line of scrimmage. He leads the team in that, and right there, it paid off huge for him. They got their big play they've been looking for. Look at him. Woo! <laughs> Justin Ragin with a big play coming in, hit the quarterback from the blind side, and then Jeremiah Brown just about had himself a defensive touchdown. What's funny is I think he thought he was already there. <laughs> he it it, it was gets a... confusing for those big fellas down there. They don't know which line is the goal line. That's right. Well, they're not They're not used to when I'm supposed to dive with the ball, but he was, if he had just kind of started diving for the touchdown. And we were just talking about the impact this Jackson State defense can have, how good they've been all season long, and they come up with a huge turnover on the play. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Yeah, I think the Tigers fans are, are, are happy with us, but I don't think the Alcorn fans are because we just mentioned that defense, and you're right. 
they pay dividends with a big impact play. And, 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 and the Tigers offense wastes no time of giving it to Wilkerson, getting in the end zone, getting their seven. When you have opportunity to take full advantage of it. And that's what they've been all year. They've been an opportunistic defense when you really think about it. You know, they're averaging only giving up 9.8 a game. It's an incredible number. And then now Jackson State with the opportunity to move right back out in front to tag on a little more. And the extra point attempt is good by the Tigers as Alejandro Mata with an extra point there. And Jackson State taking full advantage of the turnover. Coach Prime's team, they go to Wilkerson. And he bangs it in for the touchdown there. Actually, he was untouched. 10-7. <laughs> Jace JSU out in front. Number 27, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Jalen Hughes, yeah, see, he's grabbing the back of that jersey there, pushing off very light, though. Yeah, he, got, he was trying to push off on Juan Anthony there, 
who there was stride for stride there for a minute, and then the penalty will go against the Tigers. So a big play for the Alcorn State Braves on the penalty. They will get a first down, and now the football is up near the 40-yard line. Lawrence trying to throw inside, and he had it to his man, Hunt, but he couldn't hang on because Hunter, Travis Hunter, is right there to just rip it out of there. You know, I think other than quarterback, a cornerback has to be the hardest position to play because you're playing one of the fastest guys on the opposite team, and you have to react without breathing on them. <laughs> Otherwise, you get penalties. Just a great play by Travis Hunter. And Coach Prime likes to put him in one-on-one -on -one situations where he can have his man to himself. And he's just done an outstanding job in that role. He gives him that Dion treatment, really. He says, you know, just take care of this. We don't going to worry about this player. Second and ten now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Wow, big-time defense plays big-time in big moments. And again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does mm -hmm. double duty for the Tigers. When we ask Coach Bryan what will he do on offense, he says, Travis is going to do what Travis does best. And <laughs> we saw a little bit right there of what Travis does best. An outstanding return. It was an outstanding interception. Yep. And then the run back to put another touchdown on the board for Jackson State. And again, this is within a minute and a half. And you got the defense basically giving you 14 points at this, at this uh, extra point is good. Just completely turn the game around. And that extra point is good. <laughs> And, and again, you know, Butch, we, we talked about, you know, prior to that fumble uh, a little bit ago, the, the script for the Braves was absolutely perfect, exactly how they wanted this game to go. Everything was going just as planned. And again, then you get the fumble a return, almost a touchdown, and then you get this one. Hunter jumping the point of attack. Nice move there with a the little swim kind of move. And then he goes right into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, this guy is electric once he has the football in his hands, but his ability to cover... And just on the play before, we saw his one-on-one -on -one skills as he followed the receiver all the way inside on the slant, knocked the football away, and then they challenged him again, and then, boy, it did not pay off. Yeah, and again, you're right. The play before was beautiful because he was right alongside that receiver, and then at the very perfect moment, his hand just popped out and slapped the ball right as it was going to the receiver, so the receiver really can't even get a grip on it. He was knocking it out as the receiver's hands was touching it. And I don't care how good a receiver you are. You can't catch a ball with your hand getting slapped as soon as the ball touches your fingers. Yeah, Coach Travis Hunter, very highly recruited coming out of high school. Decided to go to Jackson State and made national news when he picked Jackson State over some of the Power Five conferences. As we do have a penalty flag down on the kickoff return. It was brought back by number 10, Manny Jones, but we'll check out the flag here in just a minute. But he was highly recruited because he's an electric player, and he reminds a lot of people of his head coach, Coach Bryant. Well, a lot of the big boys. A foul for blocking in the back. We do not have a foul. First down, awkward. Do not have a foul. So we, we do not have a foul. The foul was throwing the flag when you shouldn't. <laughs> that is always good news. So the Alcorn State Braves will get the football back, and now they're trailing 17-7 to in the ball game. Yeah, it looks like they're going to switch out quarterbacks here, Butch. Alcorn State going to a new quarterback, Tavarius Adams, who's also a wide receiver. In fact, he's listed as a wide receiver. Played some at quarterback last week, but just came in and handed off the football a couple of times. So this is something... They did last week when they were on offense, when they beat uh, Bethune-Cookman University 17-14. to 14, They did bring in to various Adams to maneuver at quarterback for a couple of plates. Yeah, the defense has taken over in this one. Just an outstanding job. 
Uh, and again, you get that kind of pressure, hammered, uh, take it down to the two yard line. Right after that, your running back's gonna take it in and again. And then you put the pressure, you come right back after a great cornerback and you get intercepted, return for a touchdown. So the Braves go back to the running game and pick up a couple of yards inside. Just outstanding. And it all started with Ragin making that big play to force mm -hmm. the fumble. The ball squirts out and it's recovered on the two yard line by Jeremiah Brown. Then you saw the big score right there by the running back on the play, taking it in for Jackson State. That was their main guy, Wilkerson on the touchdown, and then Travis Hunter. That was just electric. That's yeah. a word that came to mind for me. Just electric on the return. Yeah, he, he has that Dion kind of swagger when he when he gets the football, no question about it. But for, for the Braves right now, they can't focus on all that. They have just one play at a time. Don't let the score. Third and three now. They go back to the running game, and he's not going to get to the sticks. Great job by the Tigers on defense. Dennis Thurman, the defensive coordinator for the Jackson State Tigers, and they do a good job of turning him away. Juriente Davis led the chart. Watch, watch him right there. 32 just gets on him. He just uses that leg strength, and then his friends come and help him out, but he was not letting him get forward. That was Javante Leatherwood on the carry, and this guy, you know, his coach says he never sees this guy get knocked backwards, and that time several Tigers picked him up, and they dropped him short of the first down. So the punting unit comes out. That'll bring on Noah Keone to try to kick the football away. For Jack for all corn state and it's a short kick off the side of the foot it goes over the 50 though got a good bounce there but for a second there it looked like it was going to be in very bad news for all corn but he did get a nice roll out off the kick yeah when you when you're when the ball's your friend and it's bouncing for you great it's awesome but sometimes it'll, it'll backdoor you and that's when it gets trouble you know, we were talking a little bit about the defensive coordinator, Dennis Thurman, because he, like his head coach, Coach Prime, he has an NFL background, spent many years in the NFL. And when we talked to Coach Prime about the job Thurman is doing, he said what makes him so good is the way he communicates with his players. He said he has a knack for communicating with the players. And as you can see, Sadion Wilkerson is now over a thousand yards on the season coach prime said he would get him his grand today and there you go and here he is on the handoff again wilkerson with a big run off tap and again what's he getting his average about 5.4 a carry i don't care what level you're on you get five and five, five and, uh, and a quarter there or 5.4 uh, on a run that, that's pretty special tough yardage there and wilkerson again getting a workout in this one not going to have much going on there with second and four. What's interesting about Wilkerson, when when you're able to, to get a look at him, no matter what the play is, you can't tell if they're winning, losing, <laughs> if he had a good run or a bad run. He's kind of a poker player <laughs> as far as his, his body language and, and what he does. He just, give me the ball, I'll run. If I'm not running, I'm not running. Right? I mean, he just, there's no. Jackson State with the motion to the right. Shadur Sanders on third and three, looking for Wilkerson. Dumps it off and is incomplete as he tried to hit Santee Marshall, who snuck out of the backfield right there, but the defense would not be fooled on the play. Andrew Smith quickly over there to make the stop. So now uh, Jackson State is in a punting situation. And the Braves defense did what they need to do now, and I think that's where the Braves need to settle down, right, and, and just go back to the game plan. If, if you get too focused on what just happened and some of these bad breaks, then you're not gonna you're not gonna handle your game plan. They've got something to play for. They're trying to play for a chance to get in the championship game. And if they're gonna do that, they're gonna have to just keep focused one play at a time. That's a great point because it's just a 17-10, 17-7 ball game, and we do have a whistle on the field, but it doesn't feel like that because those defensive plays That's came back to back. As their second charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Yeah, the bubble burst really quick at the end of the day, right? You were up on them, and we were just saying about, hey, the script was perfect, everything was going the Braves' way, and then just that quick bang, bang, you know, things turned around. But, again, that's where the Braves just recollect themselves. And I know uh, Coach Fred McNair is getting his guys back settled down and say, look, I don't, I don't care what happened. Let's focus on the right now. And, again, they're going to have to figure out a way to get enough offense, though, to have a drive here and get some points. Doesn't have to be a touchdown on this one. But you have 429 left in the second. You got you to make something happen. So Jackson State getting set to punt the football away on fourth and three. 
Sam Johnson will do the honors again. He gets his foot into that one, and a fair catch is called for and made by Manny Jones. So the Alcorn State Braves go back on the attack, and uh, that's, you know, you just touched on it a minute ago. We were trying to say it's a 17-7 game, but because of the way the defensive explosion happened, it actually seemed like a lot more. Yeah, it did. It did. Uh, and again, I think that's because uh, uh, things just went awry very fast. And again, you're seeing uh, uh, Lawrence come back out as your quarterback. And, that, and that's, you know, now they got to get back on track and run their game plan. Well, they have a package. It's more like a running package for Tavarius Adams. And so now they go back to Lawrence and a big hole right up the middle for Howard. The leading rusher in the SWAC, mm -hmm. banging his way forward. If you're just joining us, he had the Alcorn State touchdown. You're going to take Davis is playing really well the games. He's already got seven tackles. Second and five for Alcorn State. They're kind of slowing it down a little bit now. Lawrence is going to throw it. Lost it deep, has his man, and a nice over-the-shoulder catch. Just a great catch right there by C.J. Bowler. What Bowler did right there, he set up his quarterback for success. That ball was a little, he slowed down to make the DB slow down with him, and then he accelerated to go get the ball. That was a great job by your receiver creating the space. He beat Isaiah Bolden on the play. First down for the Braves, and here comes Howard with a couple of nice moves. Howard still on his feet. He got very close to another first down. It's going to depend on where they put it down, but he's very close to moving the sticks again. Yeah, if you hear the term, keep your wheels going, that's exactly what Howard did there, going backwards or forward, whatever angle he had. He kept his legs turning and heading up the field. 3-14 to go in the half, and the Braves go back to Howard again. That's the first down as he picks up six, maybe seven yards on the carry. Yeah, the Braves, when you said a minute ago, slowing it down, they know they don't, time is not the issue here. They want to leave no time on the clock for the Tigers and get down there and score. So they're just focused on being methodical, get down the field and score. Howard is a transfer from Syracuse. This time, Lawrence in trouble, and he's going to go down with a sack in the backfield. So pressure again from the JSU Tigers. Yeah, that was a community sack. <laughs> <laughs> You got to figure out how to split this one. Yeah, watch him in here. I don't know if there's a halves or thirds or <laughs> quarters they're going to do with Baron this. Baron <laughs> Hobson got there first, and then he had a lot of help from his friends. So it goes down as a Jackson State sack. <laughs> yeah, they'll give point ones and point two sacks <laughs> for several guys. Make that 35 on the season. They came into this game with uh, 34 sacks. And that's going to really interrupt this drive because Alcorn State had something nice going on here and that big sack is going to bring up second and 16 now so they go back to the running game give it to Leatherwood and he takes it straight ahead not much happening there but that's going to give them you know a little bit of an opportunity to, to, to create something here I like the play call there get himself three four more yards up and see if they can get themselves a, a crack here at third down but they're trying to make the time. They're milking this clock. They're, they have no hurry because they want to make sure the Tigers don't have tons of time as well. We're down to the 137 mark here in the first half. Big third down here. Huge play in the ball game. Because like you said, Jorge, they would love to go to the locker room with some points, adding some more points on the board. Lawrence on third and 13. And now we have a whistle on the field. Did they take too much time or was there a timeout? Timeout. Before the flag for delay of game. Timeout. All court. First charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. 30 seconds. So did they give them a delay of game and they use the timeout after the delay of game? No, I don't think so. I think the timeout was called first. And so the, the timeout okay. is, is the so timeout. They saved it. Yes. They saved it. Okay. They stayed here. Coach McNair with his first timeout of the half and 1.15 to go. How aggressive do you get on this play? It's third and 13. You want to put something on the board, but you don't want to give Jackson State another shot. I think what you try to do is you run, and again, I always love slants in these situations. It's a protective, a little bit more of a protective throw. Your receiver can open his numbers, uh, run a nice clean pass to the inside, and then trail to the inside and see if he can get the yardage. You know, run like a, a eight yards and kind of slant in, and then you should be in that 13-yard category when you catch that ball. Um, you know, 
or you run something, you run guys deep and run a drag in there and then see if you can make something happen. But you certainly, you, I can tell you, you want to keep that clock going. As you can see, the numbers for Howard, 13 rushes, 46 yards, and he does have that touchdown. Whatever that you do here, you want to unload that ball quickly because the Tigers can put pressure on the quarterback. So a big third and 13 coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. Just an outstanding defensive play. Khalil Arrington, one of the Tigers there in the backfield eventually, but the pressure came early. Yeah, and it's interesting to see the Tigers not call a timeout and try to get the ball back right away. Uh, Alcorn's going to just let that clock just keep ticking. Wow. You know, we you, we knew it had to be something. You want to try to pick up the first down. You don't want to do something that's going to put your team in a bad situation, but mm -hmm. you would have to get rid of that football quickly in yeah. that situation. And that's why I said even that drag route, you wanted something to clear, but if it didn't, you had to have somebody dragging in the middle and just see if they can get, you know, make an athlete, make an athlete athletic play and get you the first down. You know what's coming up at halftime, don't you? Game. Some serious Offense. band action. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> May fourth down. Some very serious band activity <laughs> coming up. The Sonic Boom of the South from Jackson State is going to—they're going to perform. We're going to have a little bit of them. And how about the sounds of Dino Might marching band for the homestanding Alcorn State Braves? So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it looks like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. Yeah, I think Jackson State's just going to, you know, take the knee or just let the quarterback, let Sanders just kind of fall forward and call it a half. Thanks, Coach Prime, looking dapper as usual on the sideline. He has the best apparel. You know, he just got to, uh, you know, look. I, Say it. He's cool. Yeah, <laughs> he is. I mean, he, he is just a guy that he is a magnet. You want to be around him. You want to feel like you can get something from him. And, and you know what? What I love about him, he, he's a giving guy. He's given. He understands what he brings to the table. And he's given that freely to, obviously, everyone at Jackson State, all those young men. And he's given it to all HBCUs. He's given this love to the SWAC. He, he's, he, he's, he's an amazing guy. So Shadur Sanders takes a knee. And that is the end of the first half. As you see the Jackson State Tigers heading to the locker room there. They had a very impressive performance by their defense in the first half. This pass, though, all Corn State with the completion. And then how about some good defense right here, forcing the turnover by Jackson State. They lead it 17-7. We're at the half. We'll be right back. I'm going to show you how to make my favorite.
can see on your screen, thanks to an outstanding defensive surge right near the end of the first half, Jackson State leads Alcorn State 17 to 7. As we do every halftime, is for your enjoyment, it's time to check out the Battle of the Bands. And we're going to start with Jackson State as they lined up on the field. This is the sonic boom of the South, and boy, do they have an outstanding show lined up for us. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better.
why I was down bad. Even they used to pray to get a hundred. Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road. Yeah, I'm on the overload. I, I, I was just pity pimping. Till I got a white bitch with a lot of things. My niggas say I'm eating mama in my business. Think a nigga whipping, but I'm in the kitchen with the money count. And a whole lot of case snow bunnies. Nigga thought I was playing. I had to go and get me some more money. I had to go and flip me some packs. I had to go and get me a couple bitches with a quarter that's at least a rack. <laughs> Racks all in my britches. My young niggas jumping fish. Shoot a shoot and I ain't miss. I'll be cousin in his feelings. About a bitch, you know she break me off a little penny. <laughs> I, I, I should hit the party with the Welcome back, everyone. We're still at the half. Butch Alcindor and Jorge Vargas with you at the half. 17-7, Jackson State leading Alcorn State. Let's take a look now at some of our SWAC news and notes brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. How about this? Grambling State, Texas Southern, and Prairie View A&M all captured home wins over Pac-12 opponents this year in 2022. It was all part of that Pac-12 SWAC Legacy Series, and it went 3-3. Three and three. Elsewhere in SWAC football, the weekly honors Xavier Smith from FAMU, Aubrey Miller, of course, from Jackson State, and Bowler from FAMU. And how about Andrew Smith from Alcorn State, all named SWAC football players of the week. And then the SWAC volleyball tournament continues. The 2022 SWAC volleyball championship tournament continues this weekend with the championship match tomorrow, 3 p.m. That should be exciting. And how about our scoreboard today brought to you by Chevrolet. You see Texas Southern leading Alabama A&M 14-3 at the start of the fourth. A very key game as far as who's going to win the West. But here's the big score, and it's kind of a shocker, folks. Mississippi Valley State knocking off Prairie View A&M 27-7. So with Prairie View going down, the door is now open for maybe Texas Southern, for maybe Alcorn State if they can come back against Jackson State. So it, it's right. still wide open in the West. Yeah, no, no question about it. It brings the excitement. Again, Texas Southern, though, has everything in their hands right now. They just got to... Uh, hang on to that win, but but the first big Mississippi Valley State's win that was the big one for Alcorn State here for this game. And Bethune Cookman was leading in their game 27 to 7. You saw right there, and excuse me, Florida and it was. And here you see the state. This is why Jackson State's already clinched in the East. They are the champions, and they will play the winner of the West. And as you can see, the standings five and two for Prairie View, but they lose today. They, they lose today, so now they're five and three. And so now we're waiting on Southern. Texas Southern is winning in the fourth quarter. Alcorn is losing at the half. Right. So if Texas Southern gets their win, they'll be five and three, uh, and, and they're in good shape. Uh, again, we'll have to wait for Southern. And again, Alcorn here has to get their win as well. And Texas Southern wins, that puts them out. Yeah. 
And this is what's left in the schedule. Not much. Thanksgiving Day. It's Arkansas Pine Bluff taking on Alabama State. You and I will be doing that ball game. And then you got the Bayou Classic. The Grambling Tigers taking on the Southern University Jaguars. That's always an exciting one in New Orleans. You know, it's going to be exciting. But, boy, we, we can't wait to today because we may have a champion in the West by the end of the day today. That is true. It should be, and again, exciting when it comes yeah. down to the end. We're 17 7 here. We'll be back with more fan action in just a minute. Let's make a toast. Here's to savoring every sip and embracing every moment. Layla. Every unexpected, timeless moment. To turning up, winding down, and everything in between. Whatever you're planning, or not planning this holiday season, we're made for the moment. Number four, Kentucky. Number two, Gonzaga. Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. We are at the half, 17-7. Jackson State leads Alcorn State. Time now to check out the Alcorn State Marching Band. The sounds of Dynamite Marching Band. They are a pleasure to listen to. So let's stop and check them out.
change is coming. Swag Football is presented today by Pepsi Zero Sugar. We are at the half, and as you can see, Jackson State leads Alcorn State 17-7 in that one. It was a defensive explosion, two turnovers in a row, which really allowed the Tigers to move out in front. That big beast they call their defense, right? Opportunistic and make things happen. They did exactly that. The cause of the fumble returned to the two-yard line, punched it right in, and then the pick six. Uh, that gives you 14 points. I think they scored it in about a minute and a half. <laughs> it was that quick. Let's see how we got to that 17 to 7 score. We'll take a look at some first half highlights here. We can start with the action right there with a nice pass and a good catch inside by the Braves. And they just kept throwing it on. And now this is Wilkerson picking up a first down for the Tigers. And the first points of the game came on that Mata 38-yard field goal as he drilled that one. Shadur Sanders trying to make it happen. But look at Malachi Bailey. Rushing in for the sack and then Jarvion Howard diving in for the touchdown. Alcorn actually led 7-3 at that point. And this touchdown on that touchdown led up is a little reverse there. And then a big turnover. We talked about the turnover differential. Brown recovering it right there, which set up a rushing touchdown. And then how about that one? Travis Hunter with a nice move. Yeah, again, that was just a great move. He, he had a great defensive play right before that and then comes back with a pick six and goes all the way. 
And you can see Jackson State with another sack down the stretch. It was their defense forcing the two turnovers that led to the two touchdowns that put the Tigers out in front 17-7. Let's take a look now at the stats. First downs are even, rushing yards are even, passing yards are practically even, but when you get down, I guess the difference might be time of possession. Yeah, no question about it. But again, I think if you were Alcorn State and you started this game, you're like, man, if we can play them even into the halftime, we'll be in good shape. And they did. If you, the pick six, you take away that, this game's a lot closer. And they would have accepted that. Now, Alcorn State has got to find a way to make their big play themselves. I think that's the real big thing important for them. They've got to find a way to find that pick six, that pick, that scoop and score, whatever. They've got to find something that gives them an easy touchdown that puts them right back in. Our halftime stats brought to you today by Chris. And I mean, you talk about that. Fred McNair been here, done that. He's been in every situation you can imagine. What do you think he's telling his team before they come back out on the field? Well, he's telling them to focus, right? Guys, don't worry about those plays that happen. We're closer than you think. We've done a good job. And again, if he looks at those stats and says, guys, we're playing them even, right? They're not beating us. We're beating ourselves, right? I think that's what he does. Let's focus on the play. Let's win this quarter. I think that's probably the biggest message. Let's win this quarter. Let's knock down the mistakes, guys, and let's go at them. Alcorn State will get the football to start the second half. They trail 17-7 in this ball game, so they are looking forward to taking the first possession of the second half as the kick goes into the end zone. So the Braves will start first and 10 from the 25-yard line. It's an opportunity. You know, what are your impressions of the job that Trey Lawrence did in the first half? I thought, I thought Trey Lawrence was, was, uh, was, I don't want to take away, but serviceable. He did exactly what his team needed, exactly what they had on the script of what they needed him to accomplish, and he did just that. Now he's got to find a way to find an explosive play now, right? With, the, with those explosive plays that happen on defense for the Tigers, he needs one offensively. They're coming back out with Lawrence at quarterback. He came into this game completing only 38% of his passes, but he had a better first half than that. As he takes it, turns, and gives to Howard to start the second half, and Howard's going to be caught for a loss of maybe a yard on the play. Yeah, Lawrence, uh, a four of nine passing, you know, like you said, 44%, just 57 yards, right? Uh, so, I mean, not a lot of yard yards. It's just... He's gotten the pass when he needs it. It's been very timely. Now he's got to find a way to get something explosive. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. Coming out of the locker room, they got a big play. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Kind of just, it's almost like a, he pushed off just a little bit or slowed down a minute and then accelerated to the ball. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. He's coming up there. That's his fifth sack of the year. Make it 5.5 now for Ragin. Actually, make it six. Yeah, nine tackles for loss this season. This guy finds a way to get in the backfield. And again, timely for the Tigers, right? They give up a big play. What does your defense do? How about a 12-yard sack? <laughs> that, that's, that's the way to answer. He was credited with a sack on that forced fumble, so make it 6.5 sacks. For the year for Ragin, who's actually having a huge game here today to lead that Jackson State defense. So Alcorn gets a huge play on the long pass, and now the sack wipes that out. What a great name, Ragin. I mean, isn't that meant for a football player? <laughs> so now a timeout is called on the field. And again, I think the timeout for Coach McNair is, hey, hey guys, you know, we, we did what we wanted to do coming out of the half, but, but now we're off script. Let's get back on script. Let's figure out where we're heading. We're going to pause for a timeout and be right back in just a minute. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to oh, raise. Get that big play and then just Expectations to exceed. That's just, that's just Status quo to rise anything. above.
we run the game. Tell them that we run these niggas now, so fabricated. These niggas ain't getting paid. You niggas ain't got a job. Ooh. Get away from me, Jabron. Remember back when I was homeless. Raymond Noodles in Malone. Now I count that Billy Gates. Ooh. I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all to my safe. Them racks on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way. I still left the foreign dealer a lot. Test drive, had to drop the top. Ooh. I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, weezy never flop. Ooh. VIP, spark a bottle pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah. Climb the ladder to the top. Yeah. Flames on me, I'm hot. Yeah. Big money, every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Bad bitch, topic of discussion. Open and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenged Travis Hunter and got away with it. I'm telling you, Montario Hunt, it's the reason because Hunt does a great job of positioning himself to catch that football. He got some distance. I don't know how he got by him as much as he did, but he attacks the ball when it's thrown to him. A lot of receivers wait for it to get there. He goes up and gets it. So that's a first down, sets up a first and goal to go for the Braves. So this has been a big drive. You know, they would take that uh, one step forward, two steps backwards, but boy, they just overcame a really big sack. And this time they go back to the running game, and Jackson State's in the backfield. Aubrey Miller is there, and so is number 57 on that play. Now is Gaddy. He just had nowhere to go. It's it, That play in particular looked like the Tigers were in the huddle with him and knew it was like that practice play that you mess up on and then coach says, let's run it again, right? And everyone knows what play is going to be run. That's what that looked like. Well, I, I think a lot of the teams in the SWAC, there's no secret. These teams know each other so well. Uh, you'll throw in a wrinkle here or a wrinkle there, but for the most part, everybody's very familiar with everyone else. So that makes it second and goal, only now the football has been pushed back to the 11-yard line. Again, forward, you go backwards. So Trey Lawrence still at quarterback looking to throw blitz is on Lawrence fires it out and it was almost intercepted by Shiloh Sanders who actually had his hands on it and some open grass in front of it. Well, his father will definitely show that to him over and over again because that was uh, he had that ball in his hands. His body was leaving before his hands had the ball and look at the pressure again coming at Lawrence. That's Gaddy again. It's been a tough catch for Shiloh, but he's made those before. So now we have a huge third down for Alcorn State. The Braves were looking to get something on the board here early in the second half to get back into this ball game. Third and goal now. The give inside is to Howard, and he's stacked up again. That Jackson State front line is just doing a tremendous job. Number 47, Hobson in on the play. They've got so many guys and again, you know, the thing that the good defenses do is you trust the other guy as far as gap integrity. In other words, what hole you're going to cover, what 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 job it is for you to clean up. And you can tell everyone plays their gap and then they slide. When you see some you know, defenses, they just start freelancing and they just start shooting gaps where they feel like it. These guys keep their gap integrity and that's why their defense is so good. So a 27 yard field goal attempt by Noah Kiani. A flag goes down as the kick splits the upright but we'll have to see what the flag is all about our referee for today Preston Clipper you see on your screen outside defense the penalties decline field goes good so the 27 yard field goal is good by the Braves so they come out of the locker room with a bang the Alcorn State Braves coming up with some big plays here to start the third quarter off behind quarterback Trey Lawrence. First, this one down the sidelines to Hunt. Montario Hunt hauls it in, and then he had another big pass to Hunt. We'll be back in just a minute. Feels like it changes.
it changes. Number two, Gonzaga, Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. True story. This early... It's between two of the best teams in the land. Experience. Number four, Kentucky. Number two, Gonzaga. Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. And thanks to that Noah Keani 27 yard field goal, Alcorn State right back in this ballgame. 17 10. Jackson State out in front, but it's down to a one score game in front of a packed house. Look at the cars back there. <laughs> I mean, there were actually people camping out last night to try to get the best position to get in for this game today. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Camping out for a game. You, you've never heard that years ago. And again, that's some of the excitement on uh, not only Alcorn playing for a spot. In the championship game, but when uh, Coach Prime and Jackson State come to town, everyone wants to be here. So the kickoff is short. It will be returned, and that will give the Jackson State Tigers some great field position as they take over the football. Like a surprise pooch kick there that really just ensured Jackson State pretty much got good field position. Not, not sure. Maybe that just wasn't executed as it was <laughs> thought out to be. <laughs> Uh, I can only assume that. So here is uh, Shadur Sanders, number for the numbers for the ball game, 10 out of 17, 98 yards, hitting on 58% of his passes early in this one as he comes out for his first possession of the second half. Yeah, and he averages about 286 a game, so you know he's not too happy with with what he's what he's uh, uh, doing, you know, doing so far. But uh, again, the goal is win the game and do whatever it takes and. Uh, Coach Sanders talked about that this week. They, if they run, win it, great. If passing, they'll do whatever they need to do. He came in just under 3,000 yards with 31 touchdown passes on the day against only five interceptions. So he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks. And Hooks gets the ball knocked out. And it's recovered by Cherylus. Claude Dean Cherylus on the recovery. And that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. That ball spit out. I mean, absolutely. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in. And again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hands. Yeah, that's what it looked like. It looked like he just literally fisted it. <laughs> it just it came popping out right into his hands, and he turned it up. Now... Can that offense of the Braves do what they did a minute ago and get a get a drive together, get some big plays and move down? Yeah, so far it looks like that halftime speech by Fred McNair was a doozy. And the handoff again, it goes to their leading rusher. That is Jarvion Howard, who just bangs his way straight ahead. And we have a late flag thrown on after the play was dead. Nothing aggravates a coach more than after the play penalties. And if you're the Braves, you get a big turnover, right? It's that same thing. You get something good, you take a negative. Here it is. And again. there it is. And there's the punch right there. You see, well, it's later. So I, at some point, 
he must have just gotten his hand on that again or he just lost it. Well, it, you know, everybody, you're taught when you when you be, the runner is being held up like that, the next guy in, go for the football, and I think they were just trying to yank it out and finally got it out. But either way, it's a huge turnover, but on top of this penalty, it's going to put them in a big hole now. Instead, you're going to have second and 21. And they go back to Howard, who spins inside, and he's not going to get much. It's like the third or fourth time they have something big happen and then follow it the very next play with something negative. And again, that's a mental error. When you have a, a unsportsmanlike conduct after the play, that helps no one. That does nothing. You have to keep your focus. Be disciplined in what you're doing in the game. You can't cause your team your team negative plays well and that's one of the things coach McNair told us this week he said we're gonna have to play almost a perfect game to get this W uh, tomorrow when we were talking to him and you know so far the mistakes that hadn't happened but they're still in the ball game and which is where you want to be at this point so it's third and long and they give to Howard Howard with the big run and he's gonna be he may have picked up the first down it depends on the mark he went right over the sticks right there I think he's going to be a yard short of this, but yeah, it depends on where they mark him down. But what a great run! Watch that, and that extra cut right there by Sanders. Almost if he could have reached out. I think did they give it to him? No, it's fourth and one. It's going to be fourth and a yard, a long yard. So they're going to bring in Trey Tavares Adams will go to quarterback. He's the wide receiver. There is a package where he operates to run the zone read at quarterback. He's number one. And he hands it off to Howard, and I don't know if Howard got it, he got it on his own because he was hit in the backfield, and it was just all Jarvion Howard to pick up that first that down. That sure was. Howard did an amazing job of leaning forward to get that because, boy, he, he was he was dead to rights when he handed up. Watch. He gets that ball. He's got a defender on him. He just turns those legs and then leans, backs in for the first down. Well, he, he had to secure the ball because Jeremiah Brown was right there was right there and at the time he was trying to secure the ball so after that it was all power from Jarvion Howard to pick up that first down so way to overcome overcome that third and long yardage as hot Lawrence comes back in at quarterback he throws it down near the sidelines too long for CJ Bowler who might have had a step there he, he, they're getting some a yard or two step uh, on that outside that time again he was too far to the outside. That ball wasn't perfect to the outside. But again, that, that what I want to mention, that Braves overcame another negative, yeah. right, to keep a drive going. So they're finding a way to make the plays. So this time the handoff is straight ahead to Leatherwood. He's going to just push the pile forward, and that's going to be a seven-yard gain for Javante Leatherwood. Yeah, and Howard quietly has 20 carries, 67 yards. That's Leatherwood. Watch him just power through those last two yards. Yeah, man. This is tough running right there by the 5'11", 190-pound junior out of Tuscaloosa. He has 166 yards on the year coming into this ball game today, but he averages almost five yards a run. So this time, Lawrence has pressure coming, and he gets away from the pressure. So a great job by Trey Lawrence, and it's going to be an incompleted pass, but he was getting very close to the line of scrimmage as he let that ball go. Yeah, and again, I, I, I think he really, if he had it to do over again when he looks at the film, you, you've got to hold on to that ball and just go for the first down. You can't be too cute. He had, if he had just accelerated there on the edge, uh, he, he may have had a better opportunity. Tried to throw across his body, threw back over the middle, and the ball was knocked down. So that brings up fourth down, and the punting unit comes on for Alcorn State. So that's going to be maybe an opportunity missed right there because he would have been very close to those sticks. Instead, they will punt the football away. Noah Keone gets his kick, and it's going to hit around the 15-yard line and roll down dead at the 12-yard line. So that is where Jackson State will take over with 7.58 to go here in the third quarter. Dad, when is the future? Uh, oh, wow. Um, the future is uh, what's ahead of us. I don't get it. Yeah. 
Maybe this will help. So now we're in the present. And now we're in the future. The all electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available super cruise for hands free driving. Dad? Yeah. Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers, find new roads. Chevrolet. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. When was the last time you experienced something different? become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Jackson State Tigers are trying to preserve their perfect regular season record. Came into the action today at 10-0, 7-0 in SWAC play as they take on Alcorn State. And the Tigers have a 17-10 lead as we play with 7.58 to go in the third. You know, everyone will tell you it's hard to get to the top of the mountain, but it's also hard to maintain the top of the mountain. And <laughs> that's what the Tigers have had to do all season long. Every time they show up anywhere, they always get the best of the other team. Uh, they're getting it from the Brave today. Uh, and Shador Sanders really uh, 11 of 18, just uh, uh, 127 yards. He is 61 percent, so he is maintaining his accuracy, but no touchdowns. You know he's looking to get something to find some magic here. So Sanders on first down hands it off to Wilkerson, and he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Last week, Jackson State knocked off Alabama A&M 27-13, but they trailed in that one after one. They actually trailed 10-7 in that one. So, uh, you know, they're used to playing some close games and letting that defense take over and, and, and help them come away with a victory. Well, everyone's gunning for you, right? So you, you can't have those little little slips because everyone's coming for you with their best, and they've had to overcome that and maintain their, their execution level. So loss of one, making it second and 11, and that's a completed pass right there. It's going to be very close to Rico Powers. And he may have gotten a first down there. Depend on it depends on where they spot that one. And they will get a first down as they move the sticks on the sidelines. So Sanders to Rico Powers, and it's a first down for Jackson State. This time Sanders keeps on the fake, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. He's sacked on the play by the Braves. Good pressure on the quarterback as he tried to run the play action fake. Didn't even have a chance to get it off. Malachi Bailey again. That's what his third time in the backfield with a big play here. Whoa. I think it's his third sack of the game. He has had a whale of a game for the Braves. Yeah, Malachi Bailey is giving Devin Hayes fits on that offensive line. I mean, he's just getting in the backfield. I'm sure he's gotten to know Shadur right now. They got to be pretty good buddies. <laughs> so Sanders with the pass to Daniels. It's complete, but Daniels is going to be wrapped up. And that's going to be a very short game, if any, on that play. Well, this Braves defense is playing really, really well. Uh, it's impressive how they're keeping everything in front of them. And again, their tackling has been great. You know, it is such a hard thing to tackle on an island. And with these spread offenses the way they are, when you get great athletes with the ball in open space, it's tough to make the tackles, and they've done that. And they've certainly put pressure on Sanders. And Sanders, in my opinion, has looked a little too relaxed in the back. He's having more sense of urgency getting rid of that ball. Third and 17 now for Jackson State. And they give to Wilkerson, and he goes straight up the middle. And Wilkerson's going to be well shy of that. Bailey a minute ago. He came into this game with seven sacks, and we're going to have to check what he has today. He has at least two today. 
Uh, so that would put him up to nine. So, I mean, this he's going to... for loss solo which of those sacks and then he's got a, a, an assist tackle for loss as well so for a minus 22 yards uh, himself so that, that's that's some production so Sam Johnson comes on to punt the football away and it's almost blocked good pressure by the Braves this one is going to be fair caught though by Manny Jones a little bit of uncertainty there right at the catch but Manny did call for the fair catch Let's take another look at the punt. Wow. That is really close. Yeah. yeah he, was, he was trying to trying to sell a little bit like I got hit, but uh, there was nothing there. Keyron Kinsler sure. coming very close to blocking wow. that punt. And here we go again. Jorge, sit down, please. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's be glad you guys you can't like see him ball. because uh, hey, that young animals. lady can dance. <laughs> Yeah, I cannot. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, they were stomping a minute ago. We saw them uh, off to the side there. They were they were at a whole whole uh, of fraternity out there doing the stomp. It was pretty good. First and ten for the Braves. They go back to that fade pattern near the sidelines. This time it is incomplete. And Travis Hunter coming up with a great defensive play. They were trying to go to Hunt again. They've had some success with that play, but Montario Hunt covered like a glove that time by Hunter. But watch Hunt even. It's just, this, this, this pass is inaccurate, but he still tries to sell and put his body in front of the defender to maybe get a call, right? He found a way to maneuver in front of Hunt, who's a great defender. That, that's, that's exceptional. Nice job by Travis Hunter. So it brings up second and 10. Now for the Braves. Lawrence steps up in the pocket, throws near the sideline, has his man, and Bowler steps out of bounds after he makes the catch. C.J. Bowler with a nice grab. He's a transfer from Vanderbilt and one of the leaders on offense. Yeah, he's had two targets today, Hunt and Bowler. That's it. That's the only people he's throwing the ball to. Again, seven completions, 16 throws, 136 yards. Howard testing out the middle again. He's been the workhorse today, man, and we can see why he's the top rusher in the SWAC. I mean, he's really done a great job for the Braves today. He just he's just consistent. You know what you're going to get from him. You know what kind of effort you're going to get. 67 yard rushing today. All I need. Yeah, he has five 100 yard rushing games this year. Second and seven now. They go back to Howard, and he's caught in the backfield, and that's going to be the end of that. Look at raging again. I mean, it looked like no one was blocking him. And, and <laughs> I don't know how quick he was able. Can't see it from that angle. But look, he just, he stands up. His offensive block, it just sheds him. That is strong. Yeah, he, he's having a great ball game for the Tigers today. He's made some really big plays. As we are winding down to the three-minute mark here in the third quarter. Excellent game line on the line Jackson State trying to stay undefeated and Alcorn State trying to stay alive in the quest for the championship in the West. The blitz coming but they hand it ahead to Howard and he spins away from the crowd and Howard's going to pick up about three. Nice spin move there. Well, that was all Howard. I mean it was like a jump spin uh, thrust forward. I don't even know how to call it. I feel like I'm I'm commentating a skater. right? <laughs> a pop spin jump forward. That was that was unique. And look at his size. I mean, that guy is he's, he's built to run. Here it is. Watch this. And then the pump stop. Bam. And then watch he just explodes forward. <laughs> gets him gets him another two yards. Yeah, he spun right away from Niles Gaddy there. But that's going to bring up fourth and six. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone. Punch it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play to put Jackson State deep in their own territory. Well, you know, the Braves right now are doing what they have to do to keep themselves in it and get an opportunity to, to, to win this game. And again, Coach Prime, you can tell he's getting a little bit intense over here. Seeing his team, they need to execute. He talks about dominate, dominate every time you talk to him. And you hear him talk to his team. He talks about dominating. He's not liking what he's seeing right now. You see that Jackson State has 467.7 yards per game. That's their average. But today, only 170 yards. 
So 300 yards less. You got to give a lot of credit to that Braves defense. Uh, you do, and they're keeping them off balance, and then they've been very opportunistic on making the plays they need to make. First and ten now for Jackson State, and they go to Wilkerson, and there's just no room there at all. I mean, a good job of jamming up on Wilkerson as he can't. He's no gain on the play. Yeah, and the one thing I'll say about the, the, the Tigers offense, and again, Sanders, I just feel like at times when he's been sacked, he just seems a little too confident that no one's going to get to him. He needs to just play with some more urgency. When he gets that ball out quick and plays with, with uh, a little bit of aggressiveness, he's much more effective. No gain on the run. So that brings up second and ten for the Tigers. Shadur Sanders will throw from his own end zone. Fires over the middle, and he overshot his man there. Was looking for Daniels again. Daniels has been the number one targeted receiver today for Jackson State. Oh, no, no question about it. And again, he's a he's a big playmaker. He's their number one receiver all season long. 40, defense, number 14, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. As you can see, there was a flag there for defensive holding on the play by the Braves number 14 Calvante key is the guilty party well he was celebrating good defense but I guess right before we saw that he must have grabbed him and held him back when that ball just hit the air so uh, again uh, the Tigers get a first down and now they got to see what they can do with this that's a big first down because Shadur Sanders was throwing out of his own end zone and then now you're going to have a first and 10 so you get to start all over again with 2.06 to go here in the third quarter. And they go to the jet sweep around the outside. That's Willie Gaines. And he makes a nice job, does a nice job turning the corner, trying to pick up what he could on the play. Yeah, and that was a hard corner. I mean, it, was, it wasn't an easy one to get around the edge of, but he did a nice job of just kind of uh, squilling around that side there. Gaines is 5'9", 170 pound junior from Cocoa Beach, Florida. So the handoff goes to Wilkerson again, and he's going to be caught and dropped by Terrence Ellis, the leading tackler for the Braves. Again, Braves defense finding a way to hang in there right now, but uh, they're going to they're going to find a way to get a stop here as the Tigers just get another first down. Yeah, first and ten, and all of a sudden that big penalty, the holding on defensive holding was huge for Jackson State on this drive. So Shadur Sanders looking to throw it. Has some pressure and he just throws it away as he was under a lot of heat in the pocket and he wisely threw that one into the ground. Yeah, and again, watch that pressure come real quick. At first, he thinks he's got plenty of time and then he has to get rid of that ball real fast. And again, I like the fact that he got rid of it. Throw it at his feet. Move on to the next next play, right? You can't take sacks. He cannot take sacks. Claude Dean Sherrillis on the pressure, putting the pressure on Shadur Sanders in the pocket. So that will bring us to second and 10 now for the JSU offense. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket and he has to throw it away and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. He went down low to get it, and so far, no, no word from the officials. Looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into what a, what an incredible interception right there. What a great job. What an outstanding catch, reaching out and grabbing that ball. In fact, he came off his man. He could see where Sanders was. He was following Sanders' eyes and reacted to the football and made that incredible interception. Yeah, Sanders was just trying to get rid of the ball. But he's not seeing things as he normally has. We've seen him a couple of times, and he just, again, he rolled into the pressure. He had, If he had stepped up, there was a huge gap there. He rolled outside and get your tackle, trying to push him to the outside. He ran into pressure. So first and 10 for the Braves. They're going to go to the halfback pass, and now Howard pulls it down. Howard, for just a second, was looking downfield like he might want to throw the football, and then instead he had to pull it down, and he runs it straight ahead. You know, I always have a lot of respect for uh, running backs. You know, they don't get a chance to pass very often, so when they do, you know they want it. I want to throw, I want to throw. If you don't see it there, you're a running back. Run the ball. There was a flag on the play, though. Yeah, we'll have to see it. 
Uh, you know, you talk about having a good time. There's holding on the defense, so it's going to end up being a first down for the offense of Alcorn State, and that's going to be a big penalty. And they are knocking at the door now. And again, they they have if, if I mean the game's right here, right? They can tie things up with a touchdown here. They've they've shown the ability to make the plays when they have to. Can they do it right here and tie this game up? Well, things have happened in a hurry in this game. You know, we had a space there that most of the whole first quarter, not a lot going on, but when things have happened, they've happened very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yep, in bunches. First and 10 now with a minute to go, and we have movement up front and another flag down. Wow. That Steve, might have been Steve, jumping the gun just a little bit. Steve Carter was showing drop and roll techniques. <laughs> what happens when you see a fire? Defense, 97 with contact. That is 97. Remains first down. Devonta Davis, who jumped off sides. What? Steve Carter just roll, watch him roll, drop and roll. He wanted to make sure it was called. <laughs> I have never seen that kind of roll. But you know what? When I, I used to have a coach who said, look, if you're going to go outside, you better go full speed, hit the guy. Right? Don't just don't just twitch. So he got his, he got his money's worth. So now it's first and five. Lawrence under pressure. And he's caught. And he goes down. And a flag goes down at the same time as Lawrence is caught in the backfield. Jeremiah Brown, one of the Tigers back there, and there's going to be a holding call against Alcorn State. Yeah, that whole they were trying to save their quarterback a little bit. Holding. Couldn't do it. Offense, number 75. That penalty is declined. Second down. Yeah, they'll, they'll take the sack. They won't take the penalty. That's been the story of the game, though. They move forward, and then all of a sudden you have the negative plays. Yep. I can't that team attacking my gosh. So that's going to bring up a second and about 13 now to convert for the Braves. And Chris Powder gets first there grabbing his leg, and then he got some help from the friends. Handoff goes inside, and a nice hole there for Howard. And Howard fights his way down to the three. But there is another flag thrown down on the field after that great run by Jarvion Howard. That run was fantastic. I mean, when you see that type of impact. Number 68, 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Braxton Spells is guilty of holding, and it wipes out an incredible run by Howard. Look at this. Everything's supposed to go to the right. He cuts back, cuts it up. Great move there, and then bah, just buckles the knees of Sanders, goes forward. I mean, he he ran a train over him. Well, he's wow. a, he's a load when he's running the ball. He's he's like 200 pounds, maybe a little bigger than that, but he definitely packs a punch. But once again, a big penalty going against the Braves, and now they're all the way back at second and 23. This has been the pattern the whole game. Yeah, it's it's they they've they've overcome them though. And they give it to Leatherwood this time, and he's met by Miller in the hole. And Miller gets a lot of his friends jumping on the pile. Tell you what, Leatherwood churns too. I mean, they got two running backs that just, you got to work to get them. Yeah, you have to work to get them. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. And we saw a couple of outstanding plays. How about this one coming up right here by Calvante Key with a great interception. We'll be right back. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity. One to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Niggas ain't getting 
flaming noodles in my own. Now I count that Billy Gates. Ooh, I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all of my safe. Racks on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way. I still left the foreign did a lot. Test drive, had to drop the top. Ooh, I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, weeds never flop. Ooh. VIP spark a bottle pop last year. I didn't have a lot. Yeah, climb a ladder to the top. Yeah, flames on me. I'm hot. Yeah, big money. Every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Bad bitch. Topic got discussed. Nail bags, couple men of Louis luggage. Change is coming. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Get all your breakfast faves like a sausage McMuffin for just a few bucks, only on the McDonald's one, two, three dollar menu. True story. This early season banger isn't just a battle of old Americans. These guys know how to play. It's between two of the best teams in the land. Experience, number four, Kentucky, number two, Gonzaga. Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. Swag Football on ESPN is presented by Rocket Mortgage. For an expert partner to help buy your new home, Rocket Can. And you see the fans braving the 47 degrees. And what uh, would you tell me, Jorge? Rain off and on? Yeah, just a little misty here and there. And just keeps coming. They, they, the fans keep coming. They don't care. They're having a blast. So Alcorn State with the football. They trail by seven. It's a seven, excuse me. Yeah, 17 10 game here as we start the fourth quarter. And another big play by that Jackson State defense. I'll tell you, while you don't see a whole lot of fire up on the offensive side uh, for Jackson State, that defense still has some swagger. They're still playing with a ton of intensity. They are, and, and it's been the defense setting the tone today for Jackson State, and I think that's been one of the keys all season long. You know, they'll have games where the offense is great and the defense is so-so, but today it's all defense. And you see it right there, Howard being knocked backwards right there by Gerante Davis with a big stop. So here comes a long, excuse me, I'm sorry. Here comes a long field goal attempt now. It looks like a 43 yard attempt by Noah Keone. His kick is up, has some leg to it. And it is good, so Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43 yard field goal to pull Alcorn State just a little bit closer to Jackson State. We now have a 17-13 game here in the fourth quarter. What a big field goal there. That is, that is huge. That is huge. We'll be back in just a minute. Finding a place to call home isn't always easy. But even against the odds, our families made it happen. It's your turn now. And Rocket Mortgage is here to help open those doors. With a verified approval, you have an edge. So now sellers know you're a serious buyer. When it's time to buy that house and make it home. Follow this. 
there's no way. Tell them that we run the game. Tell them that we run these niggas now. So fabricated, these niggas ain't getting paid. You niggas ain't got a job. Ooh. Get away from me, Jabron. Remember back when I was homeless. Raymond Noodles in Malone. Now I count that Billy Gates. Ooh. I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all to my safe. Them racks on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. Ooh. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way. I still love the foreign deal a lot. Test drive, had to drop the top. Ooh. I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, weezy never flop. Ooh. VIP, spark a bottle pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah. Climb the ladder to the top. Yeah. Flames on me, I'm hot. Yeah. Big money, every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Beautiful night in Lorman, Mississippi, and you can see a packed house on hand also tonight. And we have a great ball game between Jackson State and the 10th ranked Jackson State and Alcorn State. It's just a four point ball game, 17 13. JSU out in front after that last field goal of 43 yards from Noah Keani. We'll have Lorenzo Garcia kicking it off right there, and it goes all the way down to the seven-yard line, and here come the Tigers on the return. That is Coleman on the return, and he's going to be dropped. Is Coleman as he brings it back, and so they will start first and ten from there. Been a big game for that Jackson State defense, and that guy... Aubrey Miller has 10 tackles so far in this ball game. And you know what? Aubrey got some great news this week. That was Aubrey Miller getting his invite to the Reese's Senior Bowl. Of course, it's happening in Mobile, Alabama on February 4th. What an honor it is to play in that Senior Bowl. Yeah, we got to thank Jim Nagy, Executive Director for the Reese's Senior Bowl, for getting us that video, that special moment. Robert Brazil, of course, former famous Houston Oiler, Hall of Famer. Uh, exceptional to get a Hall of Famer to give you an award telling you you're going to the Senior Bowl. And Miller's one of the top thirds, right? They picked the first third. So he's one of the top guys in there as they start seating and putting people in the Senior Bowl. Yeah, isn't Brazil called Dr. Doom? Isn't yeah. he? Wasn't he <laughs> Dr. Doom? Man, he was a tough defensive player, Robert Brazil, former, former Houston Oilers. So we pick up Jacksonville, excuse me, Jackson State now. The pass is blocked, excuse me, caught right there by Marshall. Santee Marshall on the play. I lost sight of the ball for just a second. Excuse me. So Marshall makes the catch and he dances upfield for a first down for Jackson State. Yeah, great catch and great move. And again, they needed that first down. That offense got to find some rhythm. They really haven't had it all game long. Yeah, and it's, it's a big first down. And, and now they really would like to answer after the field goal by Alcorn State. So Shadur Sanders turns and he hands off to Marshall. Marshall has a hole. And Marshall's going to pick up about five really quick off tackle. So a nice job by the left side of that offensive line for Jackson State. Again, kind of a counter play there. Uh, looks like the Tigers are kind of mixing up their offense, going to change things up. Looks like we got a brave that just fell down. Gonna take some time here to take that care of him. Ernest Woods, the third, who's down on the field. Looks like he's just cramping up there. So, while they have a timeout on the field, let's take a timeout in the booth. We will be back with more in just. Oh, hey there, darling, let me count on you. The road is long and I'm scared I might find.
up the phone and did a lot. Test drive, hit the drop the top. Ooh. I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, wheezy never flop. Ooh. VIP, spark a bottle pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah. Climb a ladder to the top. Yeah. Flames on me, I'm hot. Yeah. yeah. Big money, every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Bad bitch, topic got discussion. You go bugging in the trap, yeah. I, I, I should hit the party with the crew. I might pop some bands, throw a fill. I might break your bitch and got the cool. Welcome back, everyone. Let's take a look now at the SWAC scoreboard brought to you by Chevrolet and how quickly things can change. Shocking developments at Alabama AM. They scored. 21 points in the fourth quarter to come back and knock off Texas Southern. And so look at the standings. This is updated now. Prairie View still with that 5-3 and three record. They can still hang on and get the championship there. Southern, of course, plays in the Bayou Classic against Grambling coming up later. That may have a big bearing on who wins the West. But Alcorn State still in the hunt. And now we pick up Shadur Sanders with a long pass downfield. And it is a completed pass over there to Travis Hunter, the official right on the spot. Now the two officials are going to concur. But Travis Hunter made a nice catch going up and squeezing that football. Let's take another look. Yeah, I think he was juggling before he landed. He, he, he hits it inbounds first, but he juggles. And then by the time he gets his foot in, I think, yeah, I don't think that's a catch. But. The move in the sticks, though, the officials had him on the sideline. He was right there, and it's... Let's see, now we're going to they have a little pause in the exit, and now they're going to make them. We're ready to go. No, now they're going to pick. Someone's going to challenge this. Yeah, I think you've got to challenge it. Yeah, that pass. All court state. A pass. Now, they just called a timeout, so they're not challenging it. Well, it's just a, it will give the officials an opportunity to maybe look at this and see. As we take another look at it, Travis Hunter's down the sideline. There was an official right there who so, called it a catch. Okay, it hits his hands here. Now it's bobbling. His foot does come down. And then he gains possession there. Well, that other foot touched. That right foot did touch when he gained possession again. So I do think that's... Wow. It's a great job. That's that's a great catch because that first left foot didn't matter because he didn't have control of the ball. But when that right foot hit, he already re-maintained re uh, control of that ball. So absolutely fantastic catch by the Tigers. Great job by the officiating crew over there. Thanks for the camera crew shot as well. Yep, and a good job by Travis Hunter, who's had himself quite a day today. And the Tigers needed a big play. So that's a first down for Jackson State. First and 10 with the ball resting at about the 17 yard line. Call it the 18 yard line. Tigers knocking on the door. They go to the running game. Santee Marshall is going to be crushed in the backfield and he disappears as he tried to go forward. Great job by that Alcorn front. Wow, those Braves are so dead. <laughs> they just attacked him. Great job of just collapsing the point of attack, giving the running back nowhere to go. Lost a couple yards on it. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbounds. Well, there's a million fans in the way. Look at all the people taking camera shots on the field. Let's take another look, because Hunter was pretty convinced that he was inbounds. So there's the... Oh, yes, sir, that's a touchdown. Look at him dragging the right foot. And I even think, I even think that other foot was in. Yeah, Travis I, I, Hunter with an incredible game today. That was a yeah, super can, catch. Can catch that one more time. And let's well, see. No, they're going to no, run it away. They're going to run it away. But, boy, that was wow. a catch by Travis Hunter. Should have been a touchdown for Jackson State. And now we have a whistle. And now we may get the challenge because it's a timeout called by Jackson State. You see Coach Prime out there wanting some clarification on that one. 
Yeah, and I think I think this is certainly worth looking at. And I think like the other catch, right? He had on, one Bill. foot dragging. Did he have the ball State. yet? What's the challenge oh, if we had a completed pass or not? Okay, so that's a full challenge. So that is Preston Clipper right there with the call. We're going to take a timeout while they challenge this, but Travis Hunter making an incredible catch. We'll be right back. You don't have to believe in free throw superstition for it to work. Because after this many orders on NBA game day, your local wing joint believes enough for the both of you. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Same order, same time, every game day. Which means more tips for your dasher, business for your corner store, and just maybe a superstitious boost for your team. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Walgreens find our here to make Medicare easy. Even easier than those dances your grandkids love doing with you. (laughs) Start Medicare shopping today with Walgreens Find RX coverage. Plus, find low cost co pays. It's not too late to talk Medicare. Walgreens is here. just a matter of whether you only need one foot down yeah and it was a beautiful drag and that's the key butch if the ball would have moved in his hand at all then i would say it's not a catch that ball did not move at all so as soon as that foot dragged for a moment it's a touchdown even though his other foot may have gone out of bounds right after it but that drag happened before it so it's a touchdown okay here comes preston clipper with our call After further review, the play is reversed. We have a catch. The left foot drags in the corner of the end zone. The receiver maintained control of the ball. We have a touchdown. What a catch by Travis Hunter. I mean, an incredible catch. 
He's like, I knew that. By the young freshman, a two-touchdown day, one on offense, one on defense. Returned an interception earlier in the game for a touchdown, and now he flags down a pass for a touchdown from Shadur Sanders. You know, Travis Hunter came to Jackson State to learn from the, from Coach Prime and what he did. And I tell you what, he's able to show offense and defensive skills. There's that drag. There's the touchdown. But, but again, only a guy like a Coach Prime in his day when he played was able to do pick sixes and score on offense and score on, on uh, kickoff returns and be that electric. And you said it earlier, he's an electric player. And I'll tell you what, the lights are bright behind this guy for sure. Yeah, a true freshman and just an, an incredible player. Great speed, but what you saw right there was just great athletic ability as he goes up, squeezes the ball with his hands, and at the same time, you know, he has the flexibility and everything to drag that toe. Like I said, great body. toe drag, drag swag right there in the end zone. But, but your body awareness, right? You've got to be a, a heck of an athlete to have that type of awareness when things happen that quick and you're able to control your body like that. that that's just, that's special. And I think, you know, it always kills me because a lot of people I don't think really understand what elite athletes are and the difference between being an athlete and being athletic are, right? There, there, there's a difference. You can be athletic all you want. There's athletes, and what we're looking at is athletes. Well, Travis Hunter is an elite athlete. There's no, no doubt about it. And he's, you know, we, we knew that coming into this game, but if you had any doubts, he put him mm -hmm. to rest today because he's done, just been remarkable. He's been all over the field. Mm -hmm. So the extra point attempt is up, and it is good. And Jackson State has padded their lead is now 24 13 tigers out in front over Alcorn state of course Alcorn state still needs to win today to be in the hunt and they would be in the hunt if they won because prairie view a&m has already lost their ball game and texas southern let 21 points get away from from alabama a&m so what has they needed to happen right mississippi valley state they got the win alabama a&m 21 points in the fourth quarter to beat Texas Southern. And now they need to handle their own business, right? Win today, and then Grambling State to win over Southern. So they're still in it, and this game isn't. They've got enough time to handle their business, but it needs to start right now. But again, they need a lot to happen. They've got two out of four. They've you know, got one of those in their own hands. They came into this game, and it was lottery-type odds. <laughs> to get, But you can see right there. Yep. You know, you, you've cut it in half. Now you got 50% chance to. Uh, right. so, uh, and that, again, one of those is in your control, right? So that's the key. When you, the more things you have in your control, the better it is. And now they're going to have to come back and win. And they've shown their ability today to really make some things happen. So right now they have to do that. And that's why that reversal of the call on the Travis Hunter catch was so important because that was such a big play in this ball game, such a pivotal play as they're going to kick it off. There must have been a penalty of uh, some type of celebration is my guess because they're kicking off in the 20. And the line drive kick will be picked up at about the 30 yard line. Nico Duffy on the return. Duffy with some room. As he brings it back, and a nice return by Nico Duffy. Yeah, so, so the Braves are going to have a good position right at the 50-yard line to make something happen. They score a touchdown right here, then they're right back within striking distance. But that Braves offense needs to handle. You know how are they going to attack them right here? Well, and, and we're getting down to the point in the ball game where the clock is going to be very important for the Braves. Also, that last touchdown was such a big play for Jackson State. I mean, to get that touchdown and pad that lead, you know, to put the 24 points on the board because uh, now it, it, it's 11-19 to go. Still some time to go. Still enough time yes. to get it done. Uh, but the clock will become a factor here pretty soon. 24-13, Jackson State leading here with 11-19 to go. And Lawrence will throw it. Line drive pass and contact on the play, but no flag. As he was trying to get it downfield, he had Juan Anthony Jr. was his intended receiver, but it will go down as an incomplete pass. He's like Jamie Hughes on the, on the coverage there, and it was good coverage. That touchdown strike to Travis Hunter was a 19-yard pass in the drive. Seven plays, it was 68 yards, and it took two minutes and 49 seconds for the Tigers to get that one in the end zone. Of course, Fred McNair wasn't happy with the call. Jarbion Howard now on the carry, still on his feet. 
bouncing off of would-be tacklers and stretching forward. That's a great run. Only about five or six yards, but look at what he had to do to get it. Again, his center of uh, gravity is really, really good. I mean, you watch his hips turn and how he's able to maintain his balance. Yeah, look at this. I mean, quick turn to the right and then spin, maintain his balance, and then even right there at the end, he stretches out for another two. Third and three now. They give inside to ah, wow. Howard again, and he has a first down for the Braves. You didn't know if you want to say Howard or Wow, right? <laughs> I, I said Wow, and just watching him again, he, he makes something out of nothing. Again, there's look at that. In the backfield, he's almost getting tackled still. Winds up making, what, eight yards? Yeah, Shiloh Sanders finally got him down, but the first guy there is not making the stop. As you see, Howard again on the carry. <laughs> going to name him Woward. <laughs> That's good. So a good carry here and, 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 and a good play calling here by the offense. And he's eclipsed 100 yards. Elliot Raffin, the offensive coordinator, good play calling, I say, because they do have time. There is no sense in getting to a pass-happy offensive situation where you have a running back like this and you, you get one score, you're right back in it. So this time Lawrence is going to pass under pressure and he just throws it up and out of bounds. So he was just trying to throw that football away. Man, that pressure coming from the Tigers there. When they send people, it is it is absolutely, they're on fire. Well, and it's, it's uh, actually good football weather tonight. You mentioned earlier 47 yep. degrees. You're not going to get too tired in that type of uh, football no, it's game. It's brisk and feels great when you're, when you're in pads and your, your blood's flowing and all that kind of stuff. As a fan sitting there, it may be a little chilly, but uh, as a player, this is a, perfect. Perfect play. So Alcorn State now looking at a big down to continue this drive. They've had a nice drive so far. It's third and seven to keep it going. He's looking toward the top where Travis Hunter was matched up one on one and it's caught. Did he get his foot? No, he's out of bounds on the play. That was actually Isaiah Bolden on the coverage that time. And he was trying to hit C.J. Bowler again, but he led him a little too far to the outside. So what do you do here, Coach? Are you going for it on fourth down? Well, you know, I was hoping for a, a, an actual. Whoa, 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 we may have to check that oh, one he, out. He, he, he fumbled the ball out of bounds. Wow, if he'd have held on to that ball, yeah. that, that was a catch. Boy, he sure did. So all me, I'll go for it. <laughs> all court State, fourth and seven. It's too far for a field goal here, I think. So I think you, you do have to go for it. They're going to go for it. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield as he gets there and drops Lawrence. Ragin is nasty. But he came away clean. How do they how do they let that happen? They're they're blitzing in the offensive and lineman. guy who gets tackles from loss free well and the job Dennis Thurman is doing disguising the blitz and getting those rushers free to get back there and get on the quarterback just a great job tonight I mean that defense has really played a really good game for Jackson State so they go to the running game this time and it looks like it's Wilkerson who's back in the backfield now. He's in the game for JSU. Ragin has accounted for 47 negative yards. <laughs> 47 negative yards, three tackles for loss. You know what they, they call that? That's a baller. Whew. That's a guy who gets it done. JSU now on second down. They go back to the running game, and it's Wilkerson spinning off of would-be tacklers, and Wilkerson comes up with a huge gain. He's going to be close to another first down. Let's see where they mark it. It is a first down as they move the chains for Jackson State, and the Tigers get quickly back to the line of scrimmage. And now they back off. I was surprised how quickly they got back there with the clock running down. We're now under nine minutes to go in the ball game. So to give us to Wilkerson again, his third consecutive carry. That time the Braves respond, responded on defense. 
Mikhail Webb led that, led that charge for the defense for the Braves. And again, you know, when you line up to line of scrimmage real quick, you just make the defense not get to rest, right? At the end of the day, they have to be ready for longer. And, and again, a defender, it's just reactionary, so it takes more energy. Sanders looking to throw this time. Pressure coming. Sanders, great job to remain, keep his balance. And then he just threw it away. But a good job by Shadur Sanders of getting out of what should have been a certain sack in the backfield. Yeah, that was a good spin move there. <laughs> For sure. Look at it. Watch, watch this. And boom, just does that nice little spin, able to maintain his balance, puts his, puts his arm down there. And then a great job just throwing it away. Yeah, it is big tight end over there in the vicinity. Stevens and he just unloaded that football. So now Jackson State is faced with the third and eight for a first down. And watch the blitz coming. Yeah, they're coming from, from the, the corner. corner. They're yeah. the Braves. And I think Sanders saw it and they backed off a little bit. Yeah. Here comes the blitz on the play. Sanders is going to be hit and dropped. You can't block everybody when they come through like that. That is Claudine Sherilis again getting in the backfield, making the sack. Sherilis has had himself quite a, quite a day himself. I mean, he, he's been playing well. That's his 11th tackle and his second solo tackle for loss. So he, he's had one heck of a game himself. That's a big sack. Yeah. And, and he huge. came on third down. And, and, and again, what, what Sanders are confused there, he knew the blitz was coming. He saw the corner cheating. And as soon as that play, he knew they were blitzing. And they were blitzing hard. And I, I think when he steps up, there's more room up that middle. He needs to sprint, take off, make that defense pay. So the punt is away. And the fair catch is called for and made right there by Manny Jones. And so that will take us to break. As you can see the score, Jackson State out in front leading Alcorn State 24-13. We have 7.32 to go. And Shadur Sanders right here in a lot of trouble as he stepped up and he's taken down. We'll be right back. A change is coming. Yo, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? We on commercial right now. I need y'all to get the likes up. I lost a thousand viewers when they when my screen fucked up, when ESPN started fucking up. I lost a thousand viewers. Get the likes up so people can come back. I know they unloyal anyway, but it is what it is. Appreciate y'all looking out. change is coming this might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era so black girl hockey club is all about building a community within the community we need to lower the bit rate we need to lower the bit rate <laughs> Football on ESPN is presented by Home Depot, proud sponsor of the SWAC, Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC, and by Nike, proud sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And a nice crowd on hand here. You know, they had the hills on either side filled up there. You know, the stands. I know there may have been some people who have gone home since the start of the ball game, but 
It was pretty much a packed house. Yeah, when, you know, when you get a little wet cold, you kind of just can't get warm. You got to go. <laughs> I, oh, get I, that. I get that. I think some people find ways to get warm. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. They, they uh, have a little. It's the best. It's the best night to, you know, watch a little hot cocoa, man. Yeah, where where are you going with this? I'm well, talking about hot chocolate, man. Well, I was talking about uh, <laughs> <laughs> little uh, refreshment, uh, and we do have one of the South, uh, maybe Southern Comfort, you know? one of the all court players <laughs> down on the field. Uh, and again, it looks like we've seen a couple of guys cramping up here late in the game. Uh, we have seven sixteen to go in this ball game, and the Braves still have a shot. And if you're just joining us, this race for the Western Championship has just turned all upside down for, for a minute today. It looked like Texas Southern was in the driver's seat and then they all of a sudden had 21 points in the fourth quarter from Alabama A&M, so they lose that ball game. We have Prairie View A&M losing to Mississippi Valley State now for the second year in a row. Mm -hmm. So we have some strange going ons, but how about that guy, number 12, Travis Hunter. What a day he had. He had this pick and turned it into a pick six as Travis takes it to the house for the touchdown on defense. And then you know what? On offense, Travis can go up and pick him also. He got that one out of the air for a great catch and a big first down. And then how about this one? This sensational catch in the end zone for the touchdown. Travis Hunter is our player of the game presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar, the official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. I'll tell you what, just two catches on offense, but he made them count 49 yards in that touchdown. Uh, 24.5 a catch. Did not take that right. And then with that kind of defense he plays. Uh, and again, he, he's a, an exceptional player, and he plays with a swagger, plays with that confidence, and he plays with what his coach preaches every single day, dominate, 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 uh, and that's their attitude about it. Well, but, he's he's had an incredible game. There's no doubt about it because his coverage has been pretty good, too. He's gotten beaten a couple of times, but he's been there most of the night, and that is an incomplete pass, and that's Travis Hunter again on the coverage there. A little contact. Travis goes down, and the ball is high. It's an incomplete pass. He was trying to hit Montario Hunt, but it's no damage on the play. Yeah, Hunt, I'll tell you what, Hunt Hunt battled really well. He, he, I'm surprised he didn't get a push off there a little bit because that was a pretty obvious push. But the, the problem with the Braves, they got two guys they throw it to. If it's not Hunt, it's Baller, right? That's it. They, they've not thrown it to anyone else. Both of them have four catches, and and uh, the Braves really need to find someone else that they can uh, sink in there to get the ball to. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick. And it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. Again, the Tigers here now. Now, now they're going to really try to melt that clock, right? Now they're going to try to make sure whatever they do, they don't want that clock stopped. They're going to do their best to try to make it sure they It is a little the clock chilly out. out there, isn't it? Well, I told you, once you get that mist that keeps raining a little bit, raining a little bit, raining, and cold and cold, after a while it gets into your bones, and then it's just hard to get warm. Yeah, but these are some smart football fans. They came prepared. Let's take a look now at our SWAC upcoming schedule brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Next week, you and I will have our turkey calling the Al Arkansas Pine Bluff game versus Alabama State, and then a game that's going to be for a lot of the Marvels the Bayou Classic between Grambling and Southern. That game may have a lot to do, depending on what happens here, a lot to determine the outcome in the uh, in the West. And it just increases that game. That game's always fun. I don't care if neither one of them won a game going into that game. It's a big game. But, you know, Grambling's going to go and go, we want you not to get that West, right? We don't want you in the championship game. And then Southern's got something to play for. So there's going to be a ton of intensity uh, in that game. So the run by Jackson State picks up a yard. Make it second and nine. As the clock continues to tick, we're down, closing in on the six-minute mark to go in this ball game. Shadur Sanders will pass it as he rolls to his right. A lot of pressure on him, but he throws a strike, and it's a completed pass to Kevin Coleman. That will be a first down for Jackson State. Yeah, you know, Coach Prime mentioned something to us this week about Shador. 
he has only lost in his career from high school yeah. to now about six games, was it, right? In his entire career. That, that's incredible. I, I think you said it was like nine total, nine like total. from seventh grade on. Wow, just, that, that, that is just striking to, to, to be that type of – and, again, you know, obviously some of that's the teams you play on, et cetera, but that, that says a lot about you when you just don't lose whoever you're with. Sanders again with another pass, and this one is broken up. A good defensive play over there, trying to hit Dallas Daniels again. He's been one of his top receivers. You know, it, it started because I asked uh, Coach Prime, that was Napoleon Collier on the coverage there. Napoleon Collier. Uh, I said, Coach Prime, uh, you know, the Jackson uh, State team is 10-0. I said, have you, how many times have you been undefeated? He goes, well, you know, when Shadour was in high school, we won four consecutive state championships. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a pretty nice run right there. You really can't beat that. Second down and 10 now for the offense. You see Daniels lining up as the one of the wideouts. And Sanders are going to pitch it back to Travis Hunter. Travis shakes off one would-be tackler, still on his feet, and actually Shadour assisted on the tackle there. Uh, Terrence Ellis. We'll get credit, but uh, Shadur probably got an assist on that. Say, I don't think he wants that assist on his record. That great job by the Braves just shaking that down. It was a double reverse. Uh, they did a fantastic job of playing their responsibilities. You saw that defensive end and even the corners just set that edge and you're not coming around here. Turned it back inside and they just squeezed that play in. Great job. So that's going to be a huge loss. Make it third and 20. Coming up now for Jackson State as we close in, in now on four minutes and 35 seconds to go in this ball game. Sanders turns and he hands off to the running back, and that is Wilkerson again back in the ball game. And Wilkerson will not get anything on that play. So the Tigers will have to punt the football again back to Alcorn State. You know, I'm really impressed with the Braves' defense performance today. I mean, they, they've done a nice job. I mean, you know, Sanders normally 300 yards passing, just under 300 yards. He has 216 today. Um, even Wilkerson, I mean, you know, normally he's right at 100, just under 100 yards average he's only at 65 yards you know 3.1 a carry so they've done a good job of of, of main of, of holding jackson state offense from being explosive so manny jones back to return this punt he lets it go over his head and the tigers could not down the ball at the goal line there they had a shot at it couldn't quite do it so alcorn state will take over the ball on the 20-yard line as you see coach prime on the sidelines trying to close out an undefeated regular season. Yeah, what, a, what an accomplishment for him. And look at him with his, he's, he's, he's got his sticking gloves on, like he's ready to go in there and play some ball. I think he forgot his eligibility's up. Of course, his legs won't let him do that anymore. <laughs> but uh, he, he's got style no matter what he's wearing. Huh? What a motivational guy he is for this Jackson State team. And, and no matter what's going on, he seems to weave it into a life lesson for these guys and something to just help them improve. As you can see, Jarvion Howard's numbers, 28 carries, 102 yards, and he's been more impressive than that. He also had a touchdown on the day. He's been the workhorse. As you see, Lawrence rolling out of the pocket. He's going to keep and steps out of bounds after a short game. But what can you say about the job Jarvion Howard has done well, in this ball game? It's, it's Woward, right? And then what we said, <laughs> we decided we're changing his name to Woward. Uh, and you're right. The stats don't necessarily show how amazing he, he was. But that's 100 yards rushing. He's earned every one of them. He's made one yards into five yards a, a bunch of times. He's done an absolutely great job, giving his team some stability. And that was almost interception number two for Travis Hunter as he saw where the ball was coming on that slant. Did a great job of breaking on that football and just didn't make the catch. Yeah, that's one when they break down and they're looking at film. They'll do it and they won't probably won't even say anything at first. They'll just play the play and go, hmm, I wonder what happened here. And they'll play it over and over and over again, right? Well, you won't see that very often. I can tell you that right now from what we've seen. This kid has right. some great hands. But that's why they'll show it yeah. over and over and over again. And every time he gets a little uh, full of himself, they'll, they'll have that play ready. Uh, he's not the typical DB. He can catch the ball. So this is Lawrence dumping it off underneath on third and six and Aubrey Miller 
who we mentioned is going to the Senior Bowl. He'll be playing in the Recess Senior Bowl this year on February 4th in Mobile, Alabama, and he just showed you one of the reasons why. He's just an outstanding defensive player. Yeah, I mean, that's his 11th tackle of the game. He's been everywhere. He's an emotional leader. We do have He's a flag a down, player. by the way, too, so. Ah, got you, got you. <laughs> well, then maybe it's not as 11th First and foul, <laughs> defense, number 32. 15-yard penalty, first down. So that's Davis. Yeah. He must have uh, said some uh, favorable things after the play, which cost them some uh, – or I guess they're saying that tactically. Are they saying that's a late hit on him? Yeah, they are. He's throwing on the tackle as uh, Aubrey Miller on the takedown there. That's, I don't know, it's a quick trigger, I think. He's in double, dig double digits on tackles today. I think he's close to 12, isn't that? That's the last count I had. Him yeah, he's 11 12. Or 12. Yeah, he's 12. 12. He's 12, and, and Miller's 11. Just an outstanding job. So Lawrence has the blitz in his face, and he goes down. Boy, I tell you what, the pressure came from the corner, and there's a late flag after the hit. So it may be something involved with the hit. But just great pressure coming from Jackson State, and they got there. Miles got it. Man, that, that, that's just a sandwich right there. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number 19. Oh, I think if they look at that, they see it's not. It's under further review. Yeah, he, he, he didn't hit him in the head. That was called against Herman Smith, the third, who came from that corner. It was a corner blitz. He got there in a hurry around the same time that Niles Gaddy did, and we do have an injured player on the ground for Alcorn State, and I'm not sure that that's not Lawrence. I believe it is Lawrence. Uh, we can see that play one more time, though. I think while, while uh, Herman Smith was coming into that side, Lawrence bent down, and so he didn't have impact on his helmet, what it looked, appeared like. See, he went lower. He was above the helmet. Yeah, you see, Gaddy got there first, and Gaddy kind of yanked Lawrence down a little bit. Yeah, he, 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 they did not hit heads. They did not. I don't think they can. Again, I, I get confused on what they call targeting now, but that there's no head-to-head -head contact at all. Well, we really hope Trey Lawrence is okay. I mean, that young mm -hmm. man has played a whale of a game today. He's done a great job of keeping his team in it, and he's made some big plays. As you see, he's slowly getting up to a seating position there, but uh, he's done a great job. The 6'3", 185-pound junior out of Jacksonville who started the game at quarterback, started the last three games, actually, at quarterback. Yeah, he's done a nice job today. I mean, again, for, for what he has, uh, 8 of 23. So, again, his, his just 34% effectiveness. That's tough. 153 yards uh, passing, but again, he made some key passes at the right moments. While his numbers total aren't very good, he did make key moments when they needed it the most. He did make some completions, but again, he's got to grow into that and get his percentage up and make things happen. Good to see him walking off. Looks like he'll be okay. Again, it was a hard hit. I just don't think it was targeting. Well, he's walking straight to the bench, so we're going to have to see who they bring in at quarterback next. Who's the next man up? After further review, we do not have targeting at number 19. There's no foul on the play. Second down. Let's take yep. another look. And again, right there, he gets hit from the back first, and that's why he ducks. And when he ducks, there's no head, there's no uh, head to head contact. But again, it was a hard hit, just so we'll square on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, good for replay, confirming that and, and getting the play right. So Tiberius Adams, who we saw in the game earlier, will be the quarterback now. The 6'1", 190 pounder is on the field from Meridian, Mississippi. Yeah. And he took he took a couple of snaps early in the ball game as kind of a change of pace quarterback. And uh, this time he's got the full throttle inside. He's going to run it on first down, oh, excuse me, on second down, second and long after the sack. And not much going on there. He's going to be stopped. Yeah, I think right there they were hoping to spring about seven, eight yards, Butch, and then set up a good manageable third down. Didn't happen. So now they're going to find a way to have a big play. They got two downs to get it because at the end of the day they're going to go for it. Jeremiah Brown caught him. And dropped him. So now we're looking at third and 17 to go for a first down. Good run again out of the pocket. So for the second straight time, Tiberius Adams runs with the football. 
and they really didn't want to see him throw it. So he runs it, and now they're probably going to have to kick the football away unless you're going to let T pass the football. So he's still on the field. It's going to be fourth and 11 to continue the drive. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that open field situation, right. spread the field, and then just take off. But it wasn't happening. Yeah, but on the fourth and 11, you got to throw the ball on the field. And it's the end of the game. You, 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 the only way you're going to win this game is, is to get something happening there. You needed to dump it off. So with the loss to Jackson State today, Alcorn State will be out. So now it's going to come down to Southern or Prairie View, even though Prairie View lost. Because I guess right. if Southern were to go on and lose, then Prairie View would still move on as the champion. Mm -hmm. So it's all in Southern town, basically. And what a place to have the showdown than the Bayou Classic. I mean, yeah. could that not be a better setting for the showdown in the West? Well, that's, that's a great setting no matter what. And it'll be huge. So they go straight ahead with the run. Not much curricular uh, hitting there on the left there. But... Number 25, Tyson Alexander is the running back, seeing his first action. I mean, we don't know who's in the championship game yet, except for Jackson State. We know that the Tigers will be there, and they will be undefeated. Yeah, and, and again, I think they'll they'll get some time to, to collect and, and, and get raring to go. And for them, it's going to be very similar. All season long, every single team they play plays them like it's a championship game because they are the, they got the target on their back. So I think from a Tiger standpoint, whether it's Southern or Prairie Bay and m they've shown they can beat both those teams on a consistent basis, right? But now they're going to say, oh, you got to do it twice in a year. And it's always hard to beat someone twice in a year. So, so that'll be that'll be tough. But, but Jackson State's got great mental toughness. Again, I think today when they look at their, especially their offense, they're not going to be very happy with what they saw uh, from an offensive standpoint. But defensively, everyone, you know, defense wins championships. They've got the best defense in the conference. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding. Holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense are really off balance. They just did not have have any close to the, what we've seen their offense look like before. Well, you know, Fred McNair's team came in today and really, you know, lived up to the challenge. They took on the challenge. They knew they were taking on an undefeated team. They had a big crowd on hand. It was just a great overall football atmosphere today. I agree 100 percent. And Coach Prime, of course, you know, I mean, he, he came in there, didn't dominate the way he wants. And plenty, I'm sure he's going to talk about. But uh, again, they get the win. They keep their season perfect. And now they'll just sit and wait and find out who their opponent is. Can't wait. So for Jorge Vargas, I'm Butch Alston. You are saying so long from Lorman, Mississippi, where the final score is 24-13 Jackson State over Alcorn State. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody. To them. Go and get some money from me. Stack a whole lot on this. I gotta get it.
five, hit the truck top. Oh, I be back when my album drop. Loud pack, weezy never flop. Oh, VIP spark a bottle pop. Last year I didn't have a lot. Yeah, climb a ladder to the top. Yeah, flames on me, I'm hot. Yeah, big money, every day I'm stunned. Fast cars, everything I drive, you run. Bad bitch, topic got discussed. Uh, the guy. Uh, in the trap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I should hit the party with the crew. Yeah. I might pop some bands, throw a feel. I might break your bitch and got the code. Yeah, I might pop some bands, throw a feel. Yeah, yeah, I just blow a bag with your boo. Mm-hmm. I just did the dance, drop the roof. <laughs> Go and get some money for me. Stack a whole lot of honest. I gotta get it. Reason why I'm smoking on this. I remember I was down bad. It was days used to pray to get a honey. Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road. Yeah, I'm on the overload. I, I, I was just petty pimping. Till I got a white bitch with a lot of things. My niggas say I'm eating mama in my business. Think a nigga whipping, but I'm in the kitchen with the money count. And a whole lot of cash, snow bunnies. Nigga thought I was playing. I had to go and get me some more money. I had to go and flip me some packs. I had to go and get me a couple bitches with a quarter. That's at least a rack. <laughs> Racks all of my bitches. My young Niggas jumping fists, shoot, shoot, and I ain't missing. I'll, I'll, I'll be cousin in his feelings. About a bitch, you know she break me off a little penny. <laughs> I, I, I should hit the party with the crew. Yeah. I might pop some bands, throw a feel. I might break your bitch and got the cool. Yeah, I might pop some bands, throw a feel. Yeah, yeah. I just blow a bag with some boo. Mm. I just did the dad and drop the roof. <laughs> I just hit the party with the crew. Yeah, my I might pop some bands, throw a Rex on me, that pack on me, got syrup all in my drink, I done found a new lane, yeah, follow this new way, living life, yeah, the hippie way, getting money, yeah, the hippie way, smoking onions, yeah, the hippie way, I still live before and did a lot, test drive, hit the truck to top, ooh, I've been back when my album drop, loud pack, weeds never flop, ooh, VIP spark a bottle of pop, last year I didn't have a lot, yeah, climb a ladder to the top, yeah, flames on me, yeah, big money, Fast cars, everything I drive me running. Bad bitch, bitch, I've been gonna discuss. I'm in a low, you like it. Ooh, I done found me a new lane. Yeah. Follow me, follow this new way. Tell them that we run the game. Yeah.
He ain't chasing that bag. Nope. He ain't rocking no ice. They don't got no man. Hell he ain't boarding no flights. Hell he ain't flying first class. <laughs> See, you be smoking that spice. I be smoking that gas. <laughs> Smoked out in the road. <laughs> Cameron then help me pack it up. Chick with me, help me roll it up. He asked me what. Yeah, man, we up here, man. Tell Gay Shawty. Hey. We up here, we up here. It's a normal day, man. What happened, bro? You crying tears for sure? I ain't ever going to. Huh? Somebody else. Hey, we need to go to the liquor store. I want a big thing of Cosmigos. Guess what? I already got that in the car, Saudi. You know, you know, we out here with the shit. The boomer. Tailgate, Saudi, Mayor. At the tailgate, we with the shit. He ain't grab, he ain't grab legs and shit, you know. Bougie tailgate shit, you know what I mean? Feeling good, you know what I mean? Yeah, you did. VIP, VIP status, you know what I mean? Gang shit. Y'all, gang shit. Niggas coming in there, man. Look at Brandon at the door, looking like a goddamn kingpin from the thuddies. <laughs> 40 times. Hey. Brandon look like a kingpin from the thuddies on my mama. Right down my way. He just got my phone. 40 and then when we pull up, there ain't nowhere to be found. Oh. Oh, my God. Time to go. Stop, Toad. Hey, Boy, man, that bitch love me back. Hey, feet standing on the couch. Hey, 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 hey,
I will order you a drink with my bottles in the club. We gon' pop it like dogs. See you. <laughs> I, I should hit the party with the crew. I might pop the bands, throw a fill. I might break your bitch and got the coat. Yeah, you know, when you coming in this uh, Mississippi in the silk, that's how you know you're here. Cross that bridge. Continue Louisiana. on I 20 East, entering Mississippi. You see? Cross that bridge from Louisiana over to Mississippi, man. Mississippi River. Er, we here. Motherfucking here. Mississippi with it. Homecoming is lit. It's about to be that. Everybody pulling up, you know what I mean? Everybody, man. So let's see what, what we got in the store. Shout out Dion. Shout out JSU Tigers. Shout out Shador Sanders. Let's get it. That's my sister, y'all. <laughs> look just like me. We look like. <laughs> You can't even say they ain't my son. Everybody here, the whole fam here. Y'all ready? Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lexi. Big Lex. Big Lex. To you. Let's go! Big legs, not the low one. <laughs> not the low one. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Anyone? I'm gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got mall at the airport. Let me go and go. I gotta go to Brandon real quick. Yeah, We're bread. I'm like, here I come. Yeah, you was on the way already. Yeah. I just take some 15, bro. <laughs> he think I'm in the car. Picking this nigga up from the airport. What it do? What it do? <laughs> yeah, we in this big block. You know what I mean? Look, Playboy yes, Mall on the chest. Playboy yes, Mall on the chest. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Hey. Smell it in. Man, you know, smoking yeah, on gas. Yeah. Need to roll up some new shit. Oh, I would have had one roll for you, brother, but goddamn, they tried to. Oh, whoa, 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 <laughs> what you got going? <laughs> Think I'm gonna slam my truck down. <laughs> Look, went pinky on you. <laughs> on me. Boy just, my boy just got off that plane, so he don't really drink like that, but he gonna have to take a shot. Man, listen, this homecoming. Do what we gonna do. You gonna have to take a shot. Right, here we go with it. You gonna have to take one shot of that Migo, man. One, and I'm gonna leave you alone. You gonna have to go to the club. My <laughs> here, pop the cork out the big. Hold on. <laughs> yo, yo. Yo, you heard him up. <laughs> That man had an echo. Yeah, that man had an echo. Like I'm gonna play an instrument. You gotta get one shot for the for the one two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga took that shot exquisite in the motherfucker. That shot was exquisite. Oh god. Shit. Hey, man. We got on Chelsea boots in this bitch coat. Popping on the motherfuckers. <laughs> you did. Yo, you did. <laughs> I mean, popping out. Let's see what the city talking about. Man. Hey, this is the Rock Beverly, Long Beverly, and all that shit. Give me a yellow, the gym, make me My nigga said, hey, I said, man, we hitting everything tonight. He said, man, everybody ain't rich like you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
We ain't here for nothing, my nigga. Yeah, fam, I'm going. Hey, we out set to two hours tonight. Yeah. Wait, you man, we had the inbound, man. Huh? We had the inbound, man. Me to there, don't beat me there. Can you pull up to the second the window, car, please? Y'all are in the car? Yes. Yeah. Nigga, you hear the AC going? Man, nigga, you told me to let you know when I'm outside. Where you at? We outside. Where you at? Where you oh, at? they pulling back. I was smoking them loud. I'm like, oh, shit, they finna fuck yeah, with me. We right. Next to the police truck. <laughs> <laughs> we finna pull it out, Ma. Get what? Get what? I'm going the opposite direction. Yeah, we're like, where you at? Sorry, man? I'm out. <laughs> I'm pulling you, the fuck out. Yes, yeah, it's, it's two police cars in the street. We in the Audi, man. Oh, no, no, wait, y'all in the street? Ain't nowhere near the street. I'm in front of the door. Oh, damn, yeah. Ba. You feel me? Shit, we gonna oh, figure. Oh, oh no, we gonna figure out when we get there. Hey man, it is what it, it is. It is what it is. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. They ain't doing shit. They ain't even know shit. Damn, for real. Boys, yeah. I don't know. I hear. Do you want to roll, baby? I'm like hell no. Oh, I wasted yeah. my thirty. <laughs> I wasted my thirty. <laughs> I wasted fifty. You spent 50? Oh, yeah, on the big, drink. Big ass drink. So, really, I wasted 52. Boy, that mother had the cost in it. And she put a bunch of it in that mother. Mm. It was 30. The drink, my drink was 20, because you know what I'm saying? My drink was 15. I don't know how she talked. Man, where you at? <laughs> man, I'm walking to the car. Man, run. Meet us at m -Bar, bro. Car behind us. All right, man. I'm going to call you soon I get up there. Squad. Uh, <laughs> My nigga said he popped out. Hold on. He finna go. He finna pop out. Hold on. Look, look, look. Glitter. 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 Bruh said he popping out. Popping out. You don't see me. He said he popping out. Glitter. Glitter. <laughs> Thrill of Jackie. Hold on. He come. He come. Bow. <laughs> Bow. He popping out. Yo. My goddamn tie went on flat for these ratchet ass fucking streets and motherfucking uh, Jackson. I'm trying to go to the fucking club. This motherfucker, I heard it go boom, boom, boom. And goddamn, goddamn, this fucking shit put my tie on flat, man. Now we out here, man. It's been hell trying to change this business. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to go spend three hundred dollars. And then as soon as I was like trying to call roadside season, my phone was off. They talking about four hundred fifty dollars to get it right. What? It was some bullshit, man. So I had to call 15 places. I, I'm from Mississippi. This shit country as hell. How the fuck I got to call these places for a continental tire? They talking about, or oh, you can wait till Monday. Man, fuck off. So I had to come way out here, Brandon. It's like 30 minutes from Jackson to get a tire. I had to come to the, the basically the suburbs, the good neighborhood. You know, the good neighborhood. Because nowhere else. I call Audi. The Audi dealership. Audi of Jackson, y'all do y'all need to do better. Y'all need to at least have the tire. It ain't like I'm calling around asking for a fucking alternator or some shit. I'm calling for a tire. And people don't want to hear I don't got it. Nigga. Like, come on. Especially when you're ready to pay. I uh, got the tire fixed, y'all. Had to come way out here to get it fixed. You know what I mean? Now I'm heading towards the stadium to get start the homecoming. Good thing it's 12 20 game started too. I done miss, I done miss a lot of the tailgate, but good thing the tailgate still be going on afterwards too. So it's lit. We on our way. It's another round of the Oh, yes sir. Oh. <laughs> we out here with it, man. It's lit. Huh? Can't believe he got me this shit. <laughs> I said, get me a beer. This says Club Tales, <laughs> watermelon margarita. He said, this bitch gonna get you right, bro. I, we don't see. <laughs> it better. I better be on. I better be twisted, bro. If you don't turn my phone on, I'm going AT and T. This bitch is I will order you a drink with my bottles in the club. We gon' pop it like y'all. See Molly in the club.
Yeah, man, we over here, man. Terrell Gay shot it. You crying tears of joy, ain't it? What's going on? Huh? At the Home Depot, we have the tools to make holiday gift giving magic for all those project doing, technology loving, tool organizing, wood shop working people in your life. Get Black Friday savings all through November at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with a first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't going to worry about this player. Second and ten now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield mm -hmm. by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Montario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again. But here comes the pressure. And he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks. And Hooks gets the ball knocked out. And it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery. 
And that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up, has some leg to it. And it is good, so Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone deep and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick. And it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room he was just waiting to press to take off and run and he didn't get there that's all he was just dropping back trying to set up that open. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to and they did today they showed it and again I have to say props to the to the, to the Braves defense I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional holding holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense are really off balance they just did not have have any close to the, what we've seen their offense look like Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. Okay, Chief from State Farm, I really want that personal price plan. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadour Sanders. Actually a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket. Gets by Aubrey Miller. Steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We're not going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. 
and is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it at your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield mm -hmm. by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it looks like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again. But here comes the pressure. And he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. Yeah. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hooks' hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. <laughs> Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up, has some leg to it. And it is good, so Noah Keone. Comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that open. Uh, 
Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Brave defense. I thought the Brave defense really played exceptional. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi. So came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure has caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second, player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it with your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does double. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's I'm getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. The, the punt by Keone is First good. Year. Gets it out of there. Looks like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Ontario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by JT Regent. Who is number 13 for all corner? though? That boy, he nice too, man. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions so he will throw on first down rolling to his right has a man wide open that is Shane Hooks and Hooks gets the ball knocked out and it's recovered by Cherylus Claudine Cherylus on the recovery and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State the Braves and again a great play Sanders put it right on the money he turns in and again that ball gets punched out right into his hands it looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone. 
punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a we're great be punt be by be Noah be Keone on the play. The Braves. This is Wix. Who this guy is though? Look at this. That's Travis Hunter. Why this? Oh, from Alcorn. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Alcorn gave him the game we wanted to see though. Can you see this guy right here? Look, check this out. Check this guy from all point, number 13. Okay, that's Hunter was doing his thing too, though. Oh, give me him. Give me him. Oh. Give me him. See, you can't teach that. You can't teach that. Huh. Yo. Oh. Pick six. Oh, get off me. That's some Dion stuff right there now. Oh. Yeah, 13. He ridiculous. I'm telling you. Thir 13 ridiculous, dog. He's digging. Let me see. Let me here, man. Ah, oh, that boy was mousing too, though. He was looking good. This, I think this was the most competitive game all season. It's crazy. Everybody else, JSU, been smoking them. By after halftime, they've been smoking them. This one, Alcorn gave them a run for their money. It was the rival game for sure. I'm ready to see the next. For sure. My boy said, shoulda, woulda, coulda. <laughs> right. Exactly. Look at this. Oh, now that was instinct. The way he slid his foot in there, and we had to challenge that play, but watch this. Oh, oh, that was nasty. That's instinct. You can't teach that. I'm telling you. Dion just teaching him how to perfect it. Because you can't teach what he already had this. I don't know if he played at a bigger school. They gonna run him for sure because everybody is they on a different type of speed. If he gonna be one, everybody they on a different type of speed. So, oh no, dog, I really don't. Imagine what would happen if every person in the United States suddenly for sure. The second quarter underway here with Shador Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket, has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. 
Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted they to happen. And again, they get the big pass the play, money, and they don't play money. around. They just hurry up, go to the they line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't worry about this player. Second and ten now for the break. Yeah, yeah, pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return move yeah. there? Nice little yeah. swish move there, and right into the end zone, through. throws the ball at the fence Small in the fan. Look at that. So. You go to the point of attack, right? Oh. The same thing when that this ball's one. out there. You go get it at your ball. That ball moves like noodles. Yeah, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. So. Mm -hmm. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Yeah. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield mm -hmm. by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Nah, if he leaves, Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by my, Alcorn State go, and Noah Keone as he hit like, that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. Or stay where I'm at. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect I mean, adjustment got, by the receiver. Ontario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence him, looking to throw outside. again, but here he's comes the cool. pressure, and he's going to go way down. Out. A big sack in the backfield by JT Ragin. Once he gets some muscle, some more meat on his bones, he's around. Hopefully he'll still have that agility. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions so he will throw on first down rolling to his right has a man wide open that is Shane Hooks and Hooks gets the ball knocked out and it's recovered by Cherylus Claudine Cherylus on the recovery and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State the Braves and again a great play Sanders put it right on the money he turns in and again, that ball gets punched out they didn't, they didn't right into his hands. Week. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by Noah Keone on the play. The Braves faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he better, runs better into the, the pressure. The more pocket was actually it. fine. He runs you into what, what an incredible interception. <laughs> right. Play someone like a By Noah Keone. 
you know, for Alabama. This kick is up. I don't think they want has to some that, leg man. to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and on drills the 43 yard field <laughs> goal. Plus right. two on the you play, know. so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. This is the best play of the game. Right there, the man. official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Oh. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it, and again, I have to say props to the to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense right. hey, really played exceptional, holding really holding uh, uh, Jackson State's really offense sick. really off. They just did not, not have have ball. any close to the, what we've seen their offense look like. Thanks for building your business online. Go to Wix.com. Watch these highlights again. I'm finna get that post game pulled up. That boy going stupid. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi. So came back home. First and 15 right now for Sanders and the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little 
Swish move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it looks like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks. And Hooks gets the ball knocked out. And it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery. And that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in. And again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play. So make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep. And he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no. He was out of bounds. But what a great catch by Travis Hunter. And Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding, holding. Stuart Sanders on third and seven, steps up in the pocket, has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. 
Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get, were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Monterio Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We're not going to worry about this player. Second and ten now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again. But here comes the pressure. And he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hooks' hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. <laughs> Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. 
and it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense are really off balance. They just did not. On third and seven, steps up in the pocket, has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home first and 15 now for Sanders in the offense Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey number 44 who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure he starts early goes inside and then he just stays on it he is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket. Gets by Aubrey Miller. Steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. I'm going to get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. 
The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks. And Hooks gets the ball knocked out. And it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery. And that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in. And again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds. But what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Open. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense are really off balance. They just did not have, have any close to the, what we've seen their offense look like. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports. George Sanders on third and seven steps up in the pocket. When I started my business in 2011, I chose. He's going crazy. He's going 
crazy. But but all corn D be raw as hell too. I'm not gonna lie. Ridiculous. Oh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Travis, Travis Hunter turned into Super Saiyan. He getting heated. He geeked me up this week. He geeked me up this week. Look at that. Look at that foot. Look at that foot. Y'all played a hell of a game. Y'all played a hell of a game. The bit. Nobody else gave us a game like that all season. Just think about it. Not Bethune. Not uh, Southern. We ran off on everybody. Damn sure not Battle. Well, Battle did better than I thought. Guys. Alabama A and E did better than I thought. A and M, I mean. Oh, that was almost a pick. <laughs> that was almost a pick, dog. Imagine if manufacturing automation was simple. Introducing Vention. One. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket, has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket. Gets by Aubrey Miller. Steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter 
comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments. And again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, oh how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball yeah. at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it at your ball as much as anyone else. Coming yeah, up, Travis yeah. Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here. For Press conference coming up. All kinds of gifts. Made for all kinds of giving. Etsy has it. Oh, We're in their corner and on it. Because they're local agents. Oh, man, we don't want to hear that. Get, get the press conference rolling. Coach McNair had his guys ready to play like we knew they would. We try to inspire and encourage and motivate our guys and let them know that every place we play, every team we play against is going to be a fight, regardless of the record, regardless of, of the thought process going into the game, and they played their butts off. Uh, they held us to a season low in, in yards, um, season high in sacks. Uh, but by quarterback, uh, we played well. I mean, tremendously well defensively, but we preach offense, defense, and special teams all needs to be intertwined and married to one another. And uh, it was not the case today. And I'm not, we won, but as you can see, I'm not uh, completely happy about the W. The all-core game was a one-five win. Thank you. Pepsi, people are we? Good moves, man. Coach, uh, Travis Hunter, obviously scoring on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, he was injured early in the season. What's it been like for the team to just have him back? These Travis uh, was nominated by a plethora of, of agencies, uh, scouts, as, as the best player coming out of high school last season. He's showing you that he is. It was no lie. It was no falsehood. He, he is who he is on any stage. So you're just getting an opportunity to see a healthy Travis Hunter. Coach, when he made that, that catch, uh, obviously you saw something that, that mm -hmm. uh, allowed you to go back and say, hey, let's, let's make this challenge on this game. Right. What went through your mind? Kids don't lie. You know that some kids are lie on a pick. That I picked on that ball, hit the ground. And Travis uh, don't lie, especially to me. So I, I wanted to challenge it or what else. We lose the timeout, so what? But uh, thank God it was overturned and, and we got the best of that one. Coach, can you talk about making history, letting it out? Uh, I don't, it's funny that we made it, but I don't feel it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't feel it. This, the productivity that we displayed today don't coincide with history to me. That, that coincides with complacency to me. Yeah. And that's yeah. where we are offensively. Was there anything that they presented in terms of uh, offensive line giving up five seconds? No, the, the couple of those on the quarterback as well holding the darn ball. Uh, but, we got to be able to run the ball effectively and be physical in running the football. We just got to do a better job. We got to win. You know, a lot of teams are coming up playing us one on one and putting seven guys in the box. We got to win outside. We get a lot of opportunities to win. We got to win. But we got to get the guys on the field that can win. Coach, can you talk about Reagan and um, Brown? They have two sacks each. No, uh, those guys come to play, man. We, everybody knows we're relentless. We go. We play a lot of man on the back end. That's why corners like to come and play for us. We do a lot of man on the back end, and we send our guys. They just got to keep contained as well as uh, rush the quarterback, and they're doing a great job of it. Those guys work their butts off to be where they are, and I'm, I'm pleased and happy for them, as well as Gaddy. I think uh, he got a sack or half a sack or whatever today as well. Coach Drick, ain't it? What do you think is something that you're going to want to take from this to work on in practice specifically with the guys? Um, offensively, we, we got we already had a meeting. <laughs> we already met. Um, we got to do better. We better than that. We're so much better than what we display. We got a quarterback that's pretty darn good, a running back that, that's nice, an offensive line that has been protecting our quarterback all year round, and uh, receivers that can go get it. We got to put that together and make it happen because we hadn't made it happen in over the last several weeks. And do it. Thanks, you I've been getting paid $1,000 a month, if not more, just from this app on my phone. 
And I don't know if you... But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shador Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front. Then he's going to slide down with the first down. So good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi. So came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure has caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's gonna pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up and go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Sabian Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off and is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there, and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence of the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does mm -hmm. double. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Montario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. Open and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions. So he will throw on first down, rolling to his right, has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five. And he does. Wow. What a great punt by Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket and he has to throw it away and it might have been intercepted. 
Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into what a what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense really off balance. They just... They would try to inspire and encourage and motivate our guys and let them know that every place we play, every team we play against is going to be a fight, regardless of the record, regardless of, of the thought process going into the game, and they played their butts off. Uh, they held us to a season low in, in yards, um, season high in sacks. Uh, but by quarterback, uh, we played well, I mean tremendously well defensively, but we preach offense, defense, and special teams all needs to be intertwined and married to one another. And uh, it was not the case today. And I'm not, we won, but as you can see, I'm not uh, completely happy about the W. Thank you. Pepsi Cooper, are we? Good move, Coach, uh, Travis Hunter, obviously scoring on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, he was injured early in the season. What's it been like for the team to just have him back? He's back. Travis uh, was nominated by a plethora of, of agencies, of scouts as, as the best player coming out of high school last season. And he's showing you that he is. It was no lie. It was no falsehood. He, he is who he is on any stage. So you're just getting an opportunity to see a healthy Travis Hunter. Coach, when he made that, that catch, uh, obviously you saw something that, that mm -hmm. uh, allowed you to go back and say, hey, let's, let's make this challenge on this. Right. What went through your mind? Kids don't lie. You know that some kids lie on a pick. That I picked on that ball, hit the ground. And Travis uh, don't lie, especially to me. So I, I wanted to challenge it or what else. We lose the timeout, so what? But uh, thank God it was overturned and, and we got the best of that one. Coach, can you talk about making history letting it out? No, I don't, it's funny that we made it, but I don't feel it. I don't, I don't feel, feel it. it. This, the productivity that we displayed today don't coincide with history to me. That, that coincides with complacency to me. And that's where we are offensively. I'm like, oh, was it anything that they were saying in terms of like, uh, offense, the offensive line giving up five sacks? No, the, the couple of those on the quarterback as well, holding the darn ball. Uh, but, we got to be able to run the ball effectively and be physical in running the football. We just got to do a better job. We got to win. You know, a lot of teams are coming up playing us one-on-one -on -one and putting seven guys in the box. We got to win outside.
we can get a lot of opportunities to win. We got to win, but we got to get the guys on the field that can win. Coach, can you talk about Reagan and um, Brown? They have two sack feet. Uh, those guys come to play, man. We, everybody know we're relentless. We go. We play a lot of man on the back end. And that's why corners like to come and play for us. We put a lot of man on the back end, and we send our guys. They just got to keep contained as well as uh, rush the quarterback, and they're doing a great job of it. Those guys work their butts off to be where they are, and I'm, I'm pleased and happy for them, as well as Gaddy. I think uh, he got a sack or half a sack or whatever today as well. What do you think is something that you're going to want to take from this to work on in practice specifically with the guys? Um, offensively, we, we, got, we already had a meeting. <laughs> we already met. Um, we got to do better. We're better than that. We're so much better than what we display. We got to quarterback is pretty darn good, a running back that, that's nice, uh, offensive line that has been protecting our quarterback all year round, and uh, receivers that can go get it. we got to put that together and make it happen, because we yeah, haven't made it happen in yeah. the last several weeks. And do it. God bless you, all. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass. Well. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis call, Hunter so does. I don't know if be Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes I'm the pressure. Right he there, steps yeah. up. And he's not going to get away. Go Lawrence is taken down I'm in the backfield I'm by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it looks like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. 
The leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield. Has a man with some separation. That is Hunt. And Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Monterio Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch, and for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks. And Hooks gets the ball knocked out. And it's recovered by Cherilus. Claudine Cherilus on the recovery. And that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in. And again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the what, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds. But what a great catch by Travis Hunter. And Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding holding uh, uh, Jackson State's offense really off balance. They just did not have, have any close to the, what we've seen their offense look like. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe. Are you a low-income American on food stamps or Medicaid? If so, you are now. Um, Coach McNair had his guys ready to play like we knew they would. Try to inspire and encourage and motivate our guys and let them know that every place we play, every team we play against is going to be a fight, regardless of the record, regardless of of the thought process going into the game, and they played their butts off. Uh, they held us to a season low in, in yards, um, season high in sacks. Uh, but by quarterback, uh, we played well. I mean, tremendously well defensively, but we preach offense, defense, and special teams all needs to be intertwined and married to one another. And uh, it was not the case today. And I'm not, we won, but as you can see, I'm not uh, completely happy about the W.
Thank you. Perhaps you could go over. Good moves, then. Coach, uh, Travis Hunter, obviously scoring on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, he was injured early in the season. What's it been like for the team to just have him back? Travis uh, was nominated by a plethora of, of agencies of scouts as the, the best player coming out of high school last season. And he's showing you that he is. It was no lie. It was no falsehood. He, he is who he is on any stage. So you're just getting an opportunity to see a healthy Travis Hunter. with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's gonna pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We're not going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off and is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball and then hey how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it at your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does mm -hmm. double Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. I'm going to get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Montario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. Open and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions. So he will throw on first down, rolling to his right, has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play 
Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone, deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional, holding. holding. Uh. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket, has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Monterio Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We're not going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jack. How to edit a video? Go on Fiverr. Choose a freelancer. Oh man, what a great game, man! What a great game. The kids, they, they fought, they fought the butts off tonight. Um, you know, it came down to who made the most plays, and I think they made more plays than we made uh, in terms of this ball game, the way it turned out. So, um, 
we turned the ball over a little bit too much. Um, sack, uh, fumble, of course we had the, the pick six, um, things like that. And when you have things like that happen bad, you know, it's, it don't always turn out good for you. So um, yeah, they pick I think the kids strain themselves to the max. Played hard, they fought. Defensive played an outstanding ball game, I thought. Um, you know, just coming out the gate, uh, playing fast, playing hard. So um, that's the way this team been been built uh, for years, uh, on the way they play and the way they try and finish the game. So uh, unfortunately, we come out on the short end of it. Um, don't take nothing away from Jackson State. Uh, those, guys, those guys that prepared those players to, to come and play a physical ball game, that's what happened. Uh, sure. Don't take nothing away from what they did uh, in terms of the outcome of this ball game. I they played a very solid ball game. I think Coach, Coach Sanders had a lot of to play coming in. So, um, but like I said, it was a, it was a great game. Um, one for atmosphere, you know, one for day for football. Uh, you're on this campus, this beautiful campus of Alcorn State. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we, we came out short. Questions? Coach, you mentioned some of the, uh, the mishaps, but also it's part of that you guys were still in the game, but how big were the penalties? It did, uh, especially the last drive. We down, we down, we down seven. Um, you know, we in position to to go in and score. Uh, actually, um, you know, had we two back to back holding penalties that, that cost us um, in terms of what they they sell officially. Um, but nature of the game, you know. You call holding plays on every play, but unfortunately, you know, at critical times like that, you know, stop the momentum of uh, what we were doing offensively in terms of going in the score. So those penalties hurt. Coach, can you talk about? You guys weren't afraid to go after Travis Hunter. You guys went after him. Was that idea, or just going through the reads, or what? No, I think that any time we, we we see the matchup to where we can get one on one coverage, I mean, it, it don't matter who it is. Um, you know, we will we'll, 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 we'll make those plays. I thought our receivers did a great job of going up, high point the ball and catching it, you know. Um, but in terms of um, a situation where we um, really identified any specific player to throw at, it's just the way it presented itself. The quarterback saw the coverage and um, made the throw to those guys that, that he thought could make plays, and that's what they did. So uh, going into this ball game, we thought we had a chance to, to throw the ball around. Um, and I think we did a pretty good job over the times, um, other than the pick six that we had. Um, but other than that, I mean, I thought that uh, our passing game was efficient um, enough to, to win the ball game uh, in terms of what we were doing. I thought that we ran the ball very, very well uh, at times. But um, like, I said, like I said, you know, they was prepared for things that we, we was going to present for them offensively. So we just came on the short. Do you think he's uh, as, as advertised or as good as they said he was, or what did you see? I don't. I don't look at players like that. I, I, I honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't look at them how they hype them up: four star, five star, three star, two star, one star. It don't matter. Okay. Um, no matter. Players are players. I like it. You know, uh, it's not for me to rate them. You know, I don't give them no stars. Sure. You know, so um, you know, for what it's worth, you know, our guys got started by themselves too. You know, so. Just the idea that we just came out and played the way we played, I thought it was aggressive. Coach, obviously, during today, uh, possibly with depending on how things would have played out with a chance to still get the Swag West title, um, how much was that part of the three game discussion coming in for this final game for HB? Never was. Uh, I think that what we started off the first of the year um, was our ultimate goal was to win the, the Swag West. And, um, and then that was one of ultimate goals. It wasn't. Uh, I have to give a speech this weekend, or this week, to say we got a chance to win the Swag West. I mean, it wasn't that. Uh, I thought that I got what we did in terms of preparing for this ball game to win a ball game tonight. Um, no matter what the outcome of the other situation, the, the other teams in this conference, but our job was to take care of all going tonight. And um, unfortunately, we fell short. Coach, as you look ahead, um, even throughout this year, your position, you know, like you said, it the ultimate goal wins uh, the Swag West. Things are going to fall your way uh, for, for the second for the second year in a row. I guess for you and your staff, what are some of the things you guys are already thinking about, you know, in terms of recruiting or things you guys are seeing?
<laughs> Time to steal Christmas. But let's get the second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and run. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. I'm going to get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard. The leading building your online flag. business this time he's going to go downfield has a man with some go to wix.com and, and hunt is pulled down from behind by travis hunter but there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat and that is what they need and again look yep. coach um, i'm starting with shagora uh, let's talk a little bit about the resiliency of this team uh especially over the past few weeks you've been getting everyone's best play. yeah i mean that's that's what happens when you just say Every game is a big game. All the fans are going to come out to every game, every stop we make. So we know that week in and week out. No doubt. Coach, when you uh, take a look at 58,000 people. Unbelievable. Uh, 58,000 arrived here. Um, that feeling is uh, unexplainable. You have to feel it. You have to understand that 58,000 of our people unified. They did the wave, it, it just blew my mind because we're unified here. And they were working together. And my prayer and my just dream is just that we don't leave this moment and go and do something crazy and someone lose their life over some nonsense. That's my dream, that's my vision. Everybody profited this weekend, man. And I think all the shopping centers, the hotels, the, the restaurants, everyone profited this weekend. So everyone should be happy, the streets, the hood, the, Game bang, everybody profited. So we should, I'm serious, they should be happy, they should be satisfied. I'm just praying there's no nonsense. When I watch the news for all these channels, I don't want no nonsense. I want to prove.
through there, had his guys ready to play like we knew they would. We try to inspire and encourage and motivate our guys and let them know that every place we play, every team we play against is going to be a fight, regardless of the record, regardless of, of the thought process going into the game, and they played their butts off. Uh, they held us to a season low in, in yards, um, season high in sacks uh, of our quarterback. Uh, we played well, I mean tremendously well defensively, but we preach offense, defense, and special teams all needs to be intertwined and married to one another. And, uh, it was not the case today, and I'm not. We won, but as you can see, I'm not uh, completely happy about the W. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pepsi people, are we? Good moves, man. Coach, uh, Travis Hunter, obviously scoring on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, he was injured early in the season. What's it been like for the team to just have him back these past Travis uh, was nominated by a plethora of uh, agencies of uh, scouts as, as the best player coming out of high school last season. He's showing you that he is. It was no lie. It was no falsehood. He, he is who he is on any stage. So you're just getting an opportunity to see a healthy Travis Hunter. Coach, when you made that, that catch, uh, obviously you saw something that, that mm -hmm. uh, allowed you to go back and say, hey, let's, let's make this challenge on this. Right. What went through your mind? Kids don't lie. You know that some kids are lying on a pick. That I picked on that ball, hit the ground. Now, Travis uh, don't lie, especially to me. So I, I wanted to challenge it or what else. We lose the timeout, so what? But uh, thank God it was overturned and, and we got the best of that one. Coach, can you talk about making history letting it out? Uh, I don't, it's funny that we made it, but I don't feel it. I don't, I don't feel it. This, the productivity that we displayed today don't coincide with history to me. That, that coincides with complacency to me. And that's where we are offensively. Was there anything that they presented in terms of the offensive line giving up five sacks? No, the, the, the couple of on the quarterback as well holding the darn ball. Uh, but we got to be able to run the ball effectively and be physical in running the football. We just got to do a better job. We got to win. You know, a lot of teams are coming up playing us one on one and putting seven guys in the box. We got to win outside. We get a lot of opportunities to win. We got to win, but we got to get the guys on the field that can win. Coach, can you talk about Reagan and uh, Brown? They have two sack feet. No, uh, those guys come to play, man. We, everybody knows we're relentless. We go. We play a lot of man on the back end. And that's why corners like to come and play for us. We do a lot of man on the back end, and we send our guys. They just got to keep contained as well as uh, rush the quarterback, and they're doing a great job of it. Those guys work their butts off to be where they are, and I'm, I'm pleased and happy for them as well as Gaddy. I think uh, he got a sack or a half a sack or whatever today as well. What do you think is something that you're going to want to take from this to work on practice specifically with the guys? Um, offensively, we, we got well, we already had a meeting. <laughs> we already met. Um, we got to do better. We're better than that. We're so much better than what we display. We got a quarterback that's pretty darn good, a running back that, that's nice, an uh, offensive line that has been protecting our quarterback all year round, and uh, receivers that can go get it. We got to put that together and make it happen because we hadn't made it happen in over the last several weeks. And do it. Thank you.
we run the game. Tell them that we run these niggas yeah. now. So fabricated, these niggas ain't getting paid. You niggas ain't got a job. Ooh. Get away from me, Jerome. Ooh. Remember back when I was homeless. Raymond Noodles in my own. Now I count that Billy Gates. Ooh. I just went and broke the bank. Pounds all to my safe. What's that? Rex on me, that pack on me. Got syrup all in my drink. I done found a new lane. Yeah, follow this new way. Living life, yeah, the hippie way. Getting money, yeah, the hippie way. Smoking onions, yeah. Run that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get, were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. The give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We're not going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off, and is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments. And again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence at the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop. Inside the five-yard line, so a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Montario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. Open and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions. So he will throw on first down, rolling to his right, has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. 
Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into what, a, what an incredible <laughs> interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play. So make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense. Second quarter underway here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders and the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket, gets by Aubrey Miller, steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Savion Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't have to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off. And it's picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little switch move there and right into the end zone. Throws the ball at the fence of the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? And the same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, Travis Hunter does. Dump. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. And he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. 
gets it out of there and it looks like it's going to stop inside the five yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard the leading rusher in the swag this time he's going to go downfield has a man with some separation that is Hunt and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter but there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat and that is what they need and again look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment and again perfect adjustment by the receiver Montario Hunt the 6'1 188 pounder Lawrence looking to throw again but here comes the pressure and he's going to go way down a big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. And open, and it's Hunt again. And Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter. Against only five interceptions, so he will throw on first down. Rolling to his right. Has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hooks' hands. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five, and he does. Wow. What a great punt by <laughs> Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket, and he has to throw it away, and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up. Has some leg to it. And it is good. So Noah Keone. Comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense. Way here with Shadur Sanders on third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shadur Sanders. Actually, hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders and the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. Uh, when they get were able to get Sanders, now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football.
Coach McNair had his guys ready to play like we knew they would. We try to inspire and encourage and motivate our guys and let them know that every place we play, every team we play against is going to be a fight, regardless of the record, regardless of, of the thought process going into the game, and they played their butts off. Uh, they held us to a season low in, in yards, um, season high in sacks. Uh, but by quarterback, uh, we played well. I mean, tremendously well defensively, but we preach offense, defense, and special teams all needs to be intertwined and married to one another. And uh, it was not the case today. And I'm not, we won, but as you can see, I'm not uh, completely happy about the W. Thank you. Perhaps in February. Good moves, then. Coach, uh, Travis Hunter, obviously scoring on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, he was injured early in the season. What's it been like for the team to just have him back? He's back. Travis uh, was nominated by a plethora of, of agencies, uh, scouts as, as the best player coming out of high school last season. He's showing you that he is. It was no lie. It was no falsehood. He, he is who he is on any stage. So you're just getting an opportunity to see a healthy Travis Hunter. Coach, when you made that, that catch, uh, obviously you saw something that, that mm -hmm. uh, allowed you to go back and say, hey, let's, let's make this challenge on this. Right. What went through your mind? Kids don't lie. You know, the, some kids lie on a pick. Say, I picked the ball, hit the ground. And Travis uh, don't lie, especially to me. So I, I wanted to challenge it or what else. We lose the timeout, so what? But uh, thank God it was overturned and, and we got the best of that one. Coach, can you talk about making history letting it out? Uh, I don't, it's funny that we made it, but I don't feel it. And I don't, I don't feel it. This, the productivity that we displayed today don't coincide with history to me. That, that coincides with complacency to me. And that's where we are offensively. Was there anything that they presented in terms of offense, offensive line giving up five seconds? No, the, the couple of those on the quarterback as well holding the darn ball. Uh, but, we got to be able to run the ball effectively and be physical in running the football. We just got to do a better job. We got to win. You know, a lot of teams are coming up playing us one on one and putting seven guys in the box. We got to win outside. We get a lot of opportunities to win. We got to win. But we got to get the guys on the field that can win. Coach, can you talk about Reagan and um, Brown? They have two sack feet. Uh, those guys come to play, man. We, everybody knows we're relentless. We go. We play a lot of man on the back end. That's why corners like to come and play for us. We put a lot of men on the back end, and we send our guys. They just got to keep contained as well as uh, rush the quarterback, and they're doing a great job of it. Those guys work their butts off to be where they are, and I'm, I'm pleased and happy for them, as well as Gaddy. I think uh, he got a sack or a half a sack or whatever today as well. What do you think is something that you're going to want to take from this to work on in practice specifically with the guys? Um, offensively, we, we got well, we already had a meeting. <laughs> we already met. Um, we got to do better. We better than that. We're so much better than what we display. We got a quarterback that's pretty darn good, a running back that, that's nice, an offensive line that has been protecting our quarterback all year round, and uh, receivers that can go get it. We got to put that together and make it happen because we hadn't made it happen in over the last several weeks. And do it. Thank you, John. Has a lot of room in front that he's going to slide down with the first down. So a good read by Shador Sanders. Actually, a hometown is Jackson, Mississippi, so came back home. First and 15 now for Sanders in the offense. Sanders under pressure is caught and dropped for a big loss by Malachi Bailey, number 44, who was in the backfield and came up with a huge play. 
uh, when they get, were able to get Sanders. Now watch the pressure. He starts early, goes inside, and then he just stays on it. He is relentless on the inside. And Alcorn State, the Braves with the football. This is Lawrence scrambling out of the pocket. Gets by Aubrey Miller. Steps out of bounds with the first down for the Braves. Right there was a perfect uh, window. Looks like he's going to pass and runs it. So on first down, Lawrence looking to pass again. Ball is caught at about the two-yard line. A great job coming back for the catch was Montario Hunt. Busting back inside. On first down for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Braves. So they come out quickly, and it's Jarvion Howard who bangs it in with the first touchdown of the ball game. Exactly what they wanted to happen. And again, they get the big pass play, and they don't play around. They just hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. So Jackson knocking on the door here. They give to Wilkerson, and he walks in for the touchdown for JSU. Sabian Wilkerson takes it in, and Jackson State will go back out in front. Take care of this. We don't going to worry about this player. Second and 10 now for the Braves. The pass near the sideline is picked off, and is picked off by Travis Hunter. Hunter avoids one would-be tackler. Hunter has one man to beat, and it's a touchdown for Jackson State. Again, the defense making the plays on defense as Hunter comes in and steals the interception away and then returns it for the touchdown. Plays big time in big moments, and again, watch him break on the ball. He had one good play just a second ago, then comes back and beats the receiver to the point of the ball. And then, hey, how about the return moves there? Nice little swish move there and right into the end zone, throws the ball at the fence of the fans. Look at that. You go to the point of attack, right? The same thing when that ball's out there. You go get it. It's your ball as much as anyone else. Yeah, uh, Travis Hunter does. Mm -hmm. Coming up here for Trey Lawrence. Lawrence in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's not going to get away. Lawrence is taken down in the backfield by the Tigers. So everybody's getting ready, and we're getting ready for it here. Let me get my dancing shoes on. The punt by Keone is good. Gets it out of there, and it's like it's going to stop inside the five-yard line. So a great punt by Alcorn State and Noah Keone as he hit that one, and that's going to put the Braves in the shadow of their own goal line with just 11 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lawrence has in the backfield Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the swag. This time he's going to go downfield, has a man with some separation. That is Hunt, and Hunt is pulled down from behind by Travis Hunter. But there's that explosive play you were talking about right off the bat. And that is what they need. And again, look at the way he puts this ball up for his receiver to make the adjustment. And again, perfect adjustment by the receiver. Montario Hunt, the 6'1", 188-pounder. Lawrence looking to throw again, but here comes the pressure, and he's going to go way down. A big sack in the backfield by J.T. Ragin. Open and it's Hunt again, and Hunt makes an incredible catch. And for the second consecutive time, they challenge Travis Hunter against only five interceptions. So he will throw on first down, rolling to his right, has a man wide open. That is Shane Hooks, and Hooks gets the ball knocked out, and it's recovered by Cherylus. Claudine Cherylus on the recovery, and that ball will go back over to Alcorn State, the Braves. And again, a great play. Sanders put it right on the money. He turns in, and again, that ball gets punched out right into his hands. It looks like Keyron Kinsler may have knocked the ball out of Shane Hook's hand. And the punting unit is on the field for the Braves. Noah Keone punts it out of there, trying to down it inside the five. And he does. Wow. What a great punt by Noah Keone on the play. The Braves are faking the blitz. They're showing blitz. And they come with the blitz. And Sanders has to sprint out of the pocket and he has to throw it away and it might have been intercepted. Number 14 is right there for the interception. Calvante Key. Officials looks like it is an interception. And again, he runs into the, the pressure. The pocket was actually fine. He runs into the, what, a, what an incredible interception right there. By Noah Keone. His kick is up, has some leg to it, and it is good. So Noah Keone comes on and drills the 43-yard field goal. 
Loss of two on the play, so make it second and 12 for the Tigers. Sanders looking into the end zone. Deep, and he has Travis Hunter. Did he get his foot down? That is the question. The official says no, he was out of bounds, but what a great catch by Travis Hunter, and Hunter thinks he was inbound. Trey Lawrence at quarterback. Big pressure coming. The blitz comes right up the middle, and Lawrence is dropped. He's down. That is JT Ragin again. Ragin, all kinds of problems in the backfield. So the Braves are going to punt it away. Noah Keone puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick, and it will be returned by the Tigers. Around the outside is Willie Gaines, and he steps out of bounds at about the 35. So a nice return by Willie Gaines on the punt return for Jackson State. And really, this is for the game. I mean, for any, yeah, this is it here. 135 to go in the game. Adams looking for some room. He was just waiting to, to take off and run, and he didn't get there. That's all. He was just dropping back, trying to set up that. Uh, they can certainly make the plays when they need to, and they did today. They showed it. And again, I have to say props to the, to the, to the Braves defense. I thought the Braves defense really played exceptional. What a great game, man. What a great game. Uh, the kids, they, they, fought, they fought the butts off tonight. Um, you know, it came down to who made the most plays, and I think they made more plays than we made uh, in terms of this ball game, the way it turned out. So um, we turned the ball over a little bit too much. Um, sack, uh, fumble, of course, we had the, the pick six, um, things like that. And when you have things like that happen bad, you know, it's, it don't always turn out good for you. So. The kids, they, they strained themselves uh, to the max, played hard, they fought. Defensive played an outstanding ball game, I thought. Um, you know, just coming out of the gate, uh, playing fast, playing hard. So um, that's the way this team been been built uh, for years, uh, on the way they play and the way they try to finish the game. So um, unfortunately, we come out on the short end of it. Um, don't take nothing away from Jackson State. Those guys that prepared those players to, to come and play a physical ball game, that's what happened. Uh, don't take nothing away from what they did uh, in terms of the outcome of this ball game. But they played a very solid ball game. I think Coach, Coach Sanders had a lot of to play coming in. So, um, but like I said, it was a, it was a great game. Um, one for atmosphere, you know, one for Navy football. Uh, you're on this campus, this beautiful campus of Alcorn State. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we. Came out short. Questions? Coach, you mentioned some of the, uh, the mishaps, but also the spot of that you guys were still in the game. But how big were the penalties by the time you guys got some momentum? It seemed like the penalty kind of, kind of stopped that. It did, uh, especially the last drive. We down, we down, we down seven. Um, you know, we in a position to to go in and score. Uh, actually, um, you know, had we two back to back holding penalties that, that cost us. Um, in terms of what they they sell officially, um, but nature of the game, you know, I think you call holding plays on every play. But unfortunately, you know, at critical times like that, you know, stop the momentum of uh, what we were doing offensively in terms of going in the score. So those penalties hurt. Coach, can you talk about? You guys weren't afraid to go after Travis Hunter. You guys went after him. Was that idea or just going through the reads or what? No, I think that any time we, we, we see the matchup to where we can get one-on-one -on -one coverage, I mean, it, it don't matter who it is. Um, you know, we, we'll, 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 we'll make those plays. I thought our receivers did a great job of going up, high-pointing the ball and catching it, you know. Um, but in terms of um, a situation where we um, really identified any specific player to throw at, just the way it presented itself, the quarterback saw the coverage and um, made the throw to those guys that – that he thought could make plays, and that's what they did. So uh, going into this ball game, we thought we had a chance to, to throw the ball around. Um, and I think we did a pretty good job of it at times. 
um, other than the pick six that we had. Um, but other than that, I mean, I thought that uh, our passing game was efficient um, enough to, to win the ball game. In terms of what we were doing, I thought that we ran the ball very, very well uh, at times. But um, like I said, like I said, you know, they was prepared for things that we, we was going to present for them offensively. So we just came out short. Do you think he's uh, as advertised or as good as they said he was, or what did you see? I don't. I don't look at players like that. I, I, I honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't look at them how they hype them up. Four star, five star, three star, two star, one star. It don't matter. Okay. Um, you know, a player's a player. You know, it's not for me to rate them. You know, I don't give them no stars. Sure. You know, so um, you know, for what it's worth, you know, my guys got started by themselves too. You know, so. Just the idea that we just came out and played the way we played. I thought it was aggressive. Coach, obviously entering today, uh, possibly with depending on how things would have played out with the chance to still get the Swag West title. Um, how much was that part of the three game discussion coming in for this final game of the regular season? It never was. Uh, I think that what we started off the first of the year um, was our ultimate goal was to win the, the Swag West. And, um, and then that was one of our ultimate goals. It wasn't. Uh, I have to give a speech this weekend or this week to say we got a chance to win the Swank West. I mean, it wasn't that. Uh, I thought that I got what we did in terms of preparing for this ball game to win a ball game tonight. Um, no matter what the outcome of the other situation, the, the other teams in this conference, but our job was to take care of all going tonight. And um, unfortunately, we fell short. Coach, as you look ahead, um, even throughout this year, what position, you know, like you said, it, I just did the dance off the roof. I just hit the party with the crew. I might pop some pants and throw a fill. Yeah, we make a lot of money. I make a bitch go and get some money for me. Stack a whole lot of honest. I gotta get it, reason why I'm smoking hands. I remember I was down bad. It was days used to pray to get a hundred. Started breaking hoes, doing shows on the road. Yeah, I'm on the overload. I, I, I was just pity pimping. Till I got a white bitch with a lot of dignity. My niggas say I'm 